an Odyssey station. It's taken by Javante Green. Tapped. Ball game over. Regular season over. The Knicks win 120 to 119 in overtime. Win number 50 for the New York Knickerbocker. The Knicks are now the two seed in this postseason. This is Dirt and Sprague. Playoff basketball will return to Oklahoma City once again. With Andy Dirt Johnson and Brendan Spray. I try not to, to think about the past or the future too much. I, I love trying to live in the present. I've had a really good start to the year, and I hope that I can continue on this, this path that I'm on. I'm going to continue to put in the work that's that's got me here. Dirt and Spray on 1080 The Fan. Six oh two in the Rose City. Time for Dirt and Spring on Portland Sports Leader Ten Eighty. The fan. Good morning, happy Monday, everybody. What is happening? How we doing? How we feeling? We're feeling fantastic. Weather oh. forecast is good. Golf was great. Happy Monday. Golf was great. WNBA draft is tonight. I'm jacked Hello. to see where my gal Caitlin Clark's gonna go. She's gonna go one. Well, uh, you never know. It could be uh, not, not a know. lot of mystery there. No, Chief. not according to Diana Taurasi. You know, what might do you mean? not go number one overall. She said she's not the number one pick. Well, for her, I'm still holding her to that. Hold her to that. Caleb Williams, Caitlin Clark, <laughs> Spider-Man meme, same, same, number one. I don't want to go to Chicago. What if she's like, I don't want to go to Indiana? That wouldn't uh, that wouldn't fit the narrative. <laughs> I don't want to go there. Not enough State Farm commercials. I have, I put together a list because it's a busy show today. I put together a list of my four favorite things from my sports weekend. Oh, your top four? Ooh. My top four favorite things. Now, bear in mind, these are my favorite things. These aren't the four biggest things. Okay, that's right. fair. Just the things that you enjoyed the most. Yes, things that stuck out that I saw that I was like, <laughs> that's delightful. Does this need to be a new bit on the show? Do we need, like, a CFP top four reveal every Monday morning? I, I don't know. I just put together a list <laughs> as the weekend went on, and I'm like, this is kind of cool. I'll share this with Dirt. I kind of want to make my own top four now. Okay. You go ahead. What are your four? Okay, I'll start. I got four random notes from the sports world, okay? First one. It's got to be the Dodger fan decoy. We just <laughs> talked about this story two weeks ago. We did. You had, I think it was you. I can't remember if it yes, was me. It was definitely me. I know okay. what you're talking about. But I agreed with it because it's something I think we had brought up before. Yeah. And that is the fan who catches the opposing team's home run ball mm -hmm. and throws the ball back out of pure pressure by the opposing or the other fans. Sure, throw it back. A Dodger fan caught a Machado home run, <laughs> and he had a dummy ball in his pocket, and he kept the Machado homer in the glove, and he throws out the dummy ball. The fans go nuts. <laughs> and he got interviewed. I pulled the audio, but that was one of my first things that I wanted to write down. I'm actually trying to follow your lead this year and watch a little more Sunday Night Baseball. It's kind of a throwback, isn't it? It's a little bit of a throwback. There's nothing else on. Like, you get done with all your other sporting events, and it's like, what else am I going to do? It's like Sunday at 4 o'clock. Five o'clock. Yeah. I'm making dinner. You're not sitting down watching nine innings, but it's on in the background while you're doing stuff. And so I saw that moment live. <laughs> and it the funniest thing of all time is that they caught him not only with the camera, then they went to interview I him know. on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. And he's like, "Well, you guys got me there." Nobody else saw it except the telecast. <laughs> you bastards! I thought I was going to get away with it. And most of the time, Sunday Night Baseball doesn't have my team on it, so like I don't have any care about no. who wins or a laugh at a team. Like <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, Dodger bullpen looking good. Good. They're they, fighting on the concourse in L.A. right now. They are? What are we fighting about? Oh, there was like four videos at four different spots at Chavez Ravine of people just fighting yeah. each other. Well, that's yeah. back to back. I don't know if there's ever been back to back rain delays, but Saturday night's game had a two hour rain delay. This one had a 45 minute rain delay. Uh, they don't know what to do. Now. It's raining. It's 55 <laughs> degrees in April in Southern California. They're out of their damn minds. <laughs> are they we the new L.A. now? Maybe. With our weather? We are. We don't have rain in the forecast. Because oh, they don't know what God. to do with themselves down there right now. <laughs> I mean, they need it. Stop bitching, L.A. Okay. You're in a drought. Your state's on fire. Dodger fan decoy, one of my first big stories that I had to write down on the show sheet. That's pretty good. Happened like on Sunday, but I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm going to put this list together. <laughs> that was, by, by the way, brilliant move. Yeah. I have very little respect for Dodger fan. That one. 
That's a great move. Tip of the cap. That, that's Come a pro. prepared. Yes. Play to the crowd, but yes. yeah, don't do dumb things. <laughs> I, I have the audio. We can get to. Some, I got some audio okay. on some of these things we can get to later on. But he calls himself a ball hawk, and he's like, "Us ball hawks, no, we don't throw the real ball back." He's out in the bleachers, man. He knows what he's doing. He knows. Uh, one of the second things I wrote down. Boban Marjanovic <laughs> shooting free throws in a relevant Clipper Rocket game. And if you miss two straight free throws at a Clipper game, the opposing team misses two straight, the entire fans in the arena get free chicken. Boban was alerted to this by the cheering of him after missing the first. Chicken, chicken. He points to himself, and then he kind of points to the fans. And purposely misses, the building erupts, and everybody gets free chicken. I also have the audio of that, and that is one of my favorite things from the sports weekend. How desperate are you for fan giveaways that two free throw? Like, what kind of chicken are we talking here? I think they're chicken. Filet sandwich, like a sandwich. I think Are so. Like a rotisserie chicken, I like like a no, leg. I, I think it's I think it's a chicken okay. sando. So every time I'll double check on that. You miss two free throws, you get a chicken sando. Well, I think so, if no, they two go straight, two straight, two straight, straight, straight. So back yeah. to back. Do you Opponent. get it multiple times in one game? I think it's just once. One only one chicken allowed per game. Yes. yes. Okay. I did see that, and my only thought was, if I have to suffer through another Blazer season, which I will probably turn off at some point next year. Oh, you will. Oh, it'll about, be worse about next year. Some free nuggies. Can I? I get Boban on my team. Yeah, it is a Chick Fil A sand. It's a free Chick Fil A sandwich. That's a big deal. And that's a big deal. That's a delicious little sandwich. It's a delightful yeah. chicken sandwich. And I love that he's the opposing team, but he delivered to the whole I crowd. Mean, oh, more true, athletes need to do that. That's, that's recognizing yes. branding yes. over yes. free throw percentage. Oh, he dribbled the ball. He dribbled the ball. He dribbled the ball. <laughs> he dribbled the ball. He dribbled the ball. Boban is a national treasure, and if I have to suffer through a 17-win Blazer season, I want that guy as my yeah. backup big. Give me him over Duop Reith, please. My 12-year-old daughter does not watch the NBA with me much. It's mm-hmm. mostly women's basketball, or I'm not interested. She knows him, yeah. and she goes, oh, the goldfish take all the snacks, guy. There you go. <laughs> He's he's really good at branding. He he's is. branded himself rather well. We get well. one of these guys, what, about every... When did we have George Miras on? Yeah, yes. George Miras yes. was the last one. Yep. He was fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so Boban missing a free throw on purpose to give a free chicken sandwich to the other uh, team's crowd. Uh-huh. Definitely in my top four. Uh, number three, reporter that you've never heard of, Julia Westerman. Oh, God. And I know we'll get to this later. Oh, God. She is a reporter who was selected from the media lottery to play Augusta today. And she's never played a round of golf in her entire life, and she's the one that gets to play the round at Augusta today. Dude, I could rant about this for 25 minutes. Imagine being a 30-year scribe. (laughs) Yes. You play golf. You covered the sport. It's your last year in the paper. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And you're like, let me go out with a bang. And Julia Westerman wins it. She's never played around. You never get to play Augusta. She's not even a golf reporter. No. She's a local TV anchor or sports person who just showed up to cover because she works in that at general vicinity. Yes. My only, my first thought when I saw this was, well, actually, there were more than one thought. But I did, I did ask. Do you take your clubs with you as a as a journalist, just in case you get asked? You have to. Yeah. Do you like take a loaner set from Augusta? Because how good is that loaner well, set? Well, it's got to be a top end. I loaner, would imagine right? those are going to be really nice, like clubs. really nice clubs. <laughs> right? The best rental clubs you've ever had. So would you rather play with their rental set, or would you rather yeah. bring your own sticks to do it? And I want my own sticks. I yeah. kind of do too. I want to see my club head. I want to yeah. see my bag. I want to, you know, everything I have about my bag. I just want to kind of see that visual on the course. Yeah. Now that I know that this is a thing, because I don't know why I didn't really know that this was a thing, I am I am searching every avenue of how do you get credentials to cover the Masters. Well, I'm asking seriously. <laughs> can a radio station in Portland get yes, media credentials? Yes, if, if Dirt and I next year, uh, a put, can we put in for a credential and we say we do a golf relay podcast on 1080 in Portland, would we get credentialed? It's possible. I'm sure they have to. I'm sure there's. Why are we not doing that? Some that was my thought. Sort now of that I know this is a cap, thing. <laughs> some sort of cap on the amount. I'm sure they have thousands and thousands of requests. And yes. They only have so much room. I mean, their media room is like a stadium. When you see yeah. the press conferences at the desk, it's like legitimately like yeah. a college lecture yes. classroom. It's so I don't big. know if there's I don't know if there's a vetting process. I don't know if, OK, we know these people that follow golf at the highest levels on a regular basis you guys are in right and then we have this many slots left and it's a random i don't i don't know that I mean, she's I don't a local know. tv like a, yeah. like think of a kgw sports person covering them that's what she is yeah wherever i don't i don't know what city she's from but i know it's from the south 
Um, what would happen if we went, much like the Garth Brook tickets we both entered for? <laughs> and you won the lottery? And I won. It might break up the show. It might. That could be it. That could you be the breaking point. You would be mad point. at me? That could be the breaking point. He would point. be so jealous I, I, and I, resentful. Yeah, like, he knew he couldn't say anything yeah. because it wasn't intentional <laughs> on your part. Yeah, you didn't do it And on he'd purpose. have to just swallow it <laughs> for all the years to come. But he would never, it. ever forgive you for that. I don't think I'm flying back. I think I'm just staying there, and I'm going to become a local caddy, and I'm quitting my career in radio. I feel like <laughs> the chicken and Peter Griffin and Family Guy fighting for five yeah. minutes, you would beat my my ass and then be like i'm sorry he got hurt something happened I don't i'm know. brandon sprague actually he's dirt i'm sprague we just look i'm the tall skinny one can't you tell everybody no? says you guys sound alike anyway exactly so. they won't be able to tell the difference i'll shave my beard you know we're getting less and less of that stop bringing that up all right we're getting less and less of that stop bringing it up uh finally my my fourth thing i i had to use i mean it's local which makes it great but also just sums it all up i think in a nutshell our beloved Trailblazers season is over. They yes. finally had somebody put the gun to the back of the head. It's over. <laughs> well done, Blazers. Great year. Uh, great yeah, year, great, year. great year. Another banner year for our Trailblazers. <laughs> great year. Delano Banton setting an NBA record for most threes without a make in a game. 0 for 15. <laughs> he set NBA record nice. against Sacramento when they were down 30 at the half. That's special. Hey, but that ineptitude has that put so them. Uh, the Spurs beat the Pistons. Spurs I had the, no clue the that happened. Hornets the Hornets beat other three the Cavs. I saw. That one I had not so seen. So they are tied for the third worst record, and their uh, odds <laughs> went to over 13% hey, now. Uh, Alex Saar. Let's go, baby. Saar announced he's coming out. You are a blazer. <laughs> over 15. <laughs> over 15. It's a hell of a way to end the year. Most threes without a make in NBA history. That's how you go out with a bang Can in the I NBA. Can I ask this question? of our audience today, whether you're listening live, whether you're listening on a podcast, whether you're listening Monday morning or Tuesday afternoon, please text in or tweet us if you watch that entire game and explain to me why. If you watched any of that. If you I turned didn't that game on at all I didn't for watch an extended second. period of time. I have the photo. Hold on. <laughs> please I... explain to me why you did that So to yourself. If this team doesn't improve in two years or three years, or this is kind of just the start of the free fall and they don't get out of it. I wanted to save the photo, and in case they become good and they capture the flag, I saved the photo for comedic reasons. This is going to go down. This is our final lineup. <laughs> Justin Manaya, yes. Delano Banton, Hell yeah, brother. Chris Murray, Moses Brown, and Ryan Rupin. Ryan. Ryan Rupin. Ryan Rupin. That was our lineup in the final game of the year. <laughs> I... You don't respect me enough with that lineup. I'm not, I'm not giving you a second of my time. I mean, I'm not upset that they lost. That's the whole goal. So good for them. Thanks for going 0 for 15, Delano Banton. Are we done with that being a thing? Is that over now? Have, have we moved on from that oh, stage of Blazer no. fandom? No. no, we're still in that. He we, could be a key piece. You no know Blazer fan. Can't trade untouchable asset, probably. Is that how we're feeling about Banton? <laughs> hey, off night. Come on. Uh, we're not going to throw him out. Some say there's a point guard battle going into camp next year. <laughs> Scooter Delano. <laughs> What about Anthony Simons? Is he already off the roster? Or no, Malcolm Brogdon, is he still here? We still have 37 point I, guards? I don't know. Good, what, I'm glad. What if they sign him to a two-year extension? <laughs> we will. What else are we going to do this offseason? Trade him, please. Trade him. Can God. we even trade him? Is he going to uh, contract? For all that is holy. Is he making 75K this year? Right after the show, Chauncey and Joe and uh, the uh, the exit interview started. I know. Uh, Blazer. I Look know. forward to hearing from Jody. Well, I'm sure she'll be very insightful and give uh, us some she, great she thoughts. She was not on, on the, the press release oh, as being in attendance. Not, oh, Okay, got it. Not, not all the Blazers are participating because for some reason this year, we've decided to allow Scoot and Shaden to do it before everybody else. Oh. So after the Rockets? Do, yes. Oh, do they have rehab Their last to get home to? game, I, they got to oh. do their media availability in the post game. Okay. I thought it was the weirdest thing <laughs> I've seen. I mean, they want to get to Mexico. Oh, she, They're ready for vacation. I'm well, out of here. I'm not hanging around 9 a.m. on Monday. I can't do that. I feel like largely Shaden was 1-2-3 Cancun on the season anyway. <laughs> he was very upset that they didn't let him play in the last oh, two I weeks. Oh, I bet he was tore up by <laughs> it. He was very, very upset. <laughs> I have a blazer. I have another nugget that almost cracked the top four of my favorite things of the weekend. Oh. That's blazer-related that I'll share later in the show. That's a pretty good top four. I'm not going to lie. Thank you. I knew you. Ha I had some of this in the notes. We've got some audio on some yeah. of this stuff, but I wanted to kick off of the show with I enjoyed these random things 
things this weekend on the sports calendar. The tough part for me on this weekend, all my top four things would have been Masters related. No, I'm trying to go You're off the beaten path a little bit. Like, I'm sure people saw it, but not everybody was aware that Boban gave the Clippers fans free chicken sandos. I did not know that Banton went 0 for 15 from 3. Exactly. Because I didn't even know they played. So that's remarkable, and I'm glad that I now have that information. Well, that just kicks off the show, Andrew. It gets only better from here. It's all up from here? I think. I'm it's hoping. It's going to be a spicy Monday. It is a spicy little we got, Monday. We're all over the place. We are all over the place. We've got NBA playoff matchups. That we do. I've got takes on all of them. All the series, all the play-ins. Ooh. I got to take on everything. I can't wait. Uh, I got a Blazer note that when I pass along, a not-so-fun fact is what I would like to call it. Mm, yeah. We'll dive into the Masters, of course. I want to do a little peekaboo. Did you do a check-in on mm. this sporting event? Because mm. Peekaboo! I... I watched half of it, mm. and I was kind of ashamed of myself, but also said, this is who you are, you fat piece of crap. <laughs> Sporting event that I didn't check in on. What's or no, I'm be? asking if you checked in the on The answer's it. probably no, but I'm curious. Uh, I think you might have. Okay. I think you might have. <laughs> so it's a busy show, a lot to get to. Let's start in Augusta. Hello, friends. Goodbye, Vern and Scotty, the two-time champ. Next on The Fan.
This is Dirt and Spray on 1080 The Fan. Well, we talked about it on Wednesday, Thursday. And yeah, sometimes in sports, the most obvious thing is not always the most fun thing to do. But Scotty Scheffler at 4-1, to one, as Bob Herrig comped it to Tiger Woods-like odds. You know, whether it was a big sum or a small sum, if you gambled on it, I don't know why you wouldn't have sprinkled something on Scotty at 4-1. to one. There's still 4-1 to one value there. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting until it wasn't. Scotty Scheffler winning his second straight Masters title, getting another green jacket, and a lot of narratives, I think, from Augusta and the Masters in general, especially for you golf nerds out there like Dirt and Swag, but this Masters was won on the ninth hole yesterday in the final round when he seemingly broke Colin Morikawa by hitting one of the greatest golf shots I've ever seen in my life. And just for the Tiger Woods-like effect of having the moment, that ball should have dropped on the roll down the hill. Almost did. And I still don't know how it did. And it was clearly in the middle until the last possible <laughs> second, a dimple cut left. But an amazing feat and final round by Scotty, who won a second Masters. Yeah, I thought it was an awesome weekend until the back nine on Sunday. And the only criticism there is that we've gone a number of years now where you haven't really had a Masters come down to the last two or three holes of a tournament. You think this year, obviously, Scotty, is, it's, it felt over on 12T. When he hit the island or the, the green at Amen Corner, it felt it was over. Uh, the year before, you had John Rahm and Brooks Kepka going into the final round. Brooks could never get it going. Ended up finishing in third or fourth place. Rahm ran away with it. Scotty, the, who won it the year before, I want to say won by three strokes. So it wasn't really that competitive. And the guys he beat by three were guys that finished hours earlier in Roy McElroy, who finished second in that tournament. So it's been a number of years since you've had one of these like stressful 16, 17, 18. Um, and that was the only criticism. Other than that, I thought it was a perfect weekend of golf. There's a million things to list off from Tiger grinding it out and some of the most crazy and difficult conditions that I have ever seen to somehow shoot an even par on Friday playing 23 holes was miraculous. Now he fell apart going into the sandwich, by the way, I want a Sando man. He's, he fell apart going into the weekend, which I assumed he would, but him making the cut, that was his goal. And he, he did it watching that on Friday was awesome. You had a tight, compact leaderboard. You had Max Homa in contention in a major for the first time. Obear announcing his presence with authority in his first ever major championship and it was so fun to watch, again, until those last couple of holes because you're reminded of the Sunday at Augusta, the, the like razor-thin wire that you're walking, where all it takes is one swing, and it's over. That's it. And that, how many guys had that happen? It was Colin Morikawa's tee shot on the ninth, then finding the bunker, leaves it in the bunker, game over. You're out of it. Two holes later, you had Obear on the 11th hole, Snap hook one into the water. If he just finds the right side of the green or leaves it right, chips up for par, maybe there's a different feeling at the end of the tournament. He makes double bogey at 11. The very next hole, you had Max Homa, who was grinding it out, playing U.S. Open-style golf all weekend, get a ridiculously bad bounce. It lands up in some brush. He then takes double bogey on 12. You had double bogey, double bogey, double bogey within three holes from three different players. Colin doubled another one in the mix. And it was over. And Scotty just put it in cruise control, continued to make birdies. And it that was the only criticism I had of the whole weekend. You went from like the eighth tee box call or the ninth tee box, Colin and Scotty tied, Obear one or two back, Homa one back. Like that was a four man race. And then like three holes later, it's okay, this thing's all over. Turn out the lights. But part of that is why Scotty Scheffler is so special. I was indeed rooting pretty hard for my guy Colin Morikawa, largely for the show's sake, because the marriage sign off that we talked about on Friday <laughs> would have instantly aged like old milk in hot sun no, with Colin. There would winning. have been a new exempt rule. Asians are exempt if he wins. That's the only Tiger and it's Colin. Ridiculous. That's the only <laughs> Tom <laughs> Tom Kim, Colin. go ahead and get married. Tom Kim, you're okay. You're in the clear. You can do it whenever. Whatever you want. There would have been a rule put into place. Tom Kim shaking his hand, <laughs> Scheffler at the end, in his shorts and T-shirt, like a like he's just walked onto Augusta from uh, the street. It was hilarious. What did golf in the Northwest think of the Masters? Um, I I think Scotty Scheffler is poised to have a Tiger-like year. If you go back and look at the start in 2001 when Tiger had it going, Scheffler is doing the exact same thing. The mm-hmm. only thing that's going to be different if he – can win multiple majors and win seven, eight tournaments this year is you're going to have those that say, well, he, Rom wasn't there. And those, the live guys weren't there. Um, I, 
yes, that's true. I don't know how much that really waters down the ability to go out and win multiple majors, win seven, eight, nine tournaments. But he's played nine events. He's finished in the top ten and eight of them. He's won three of them. He's won three of the most prestigious events played so far, and he's crushing the field. His uh, it, it's his dominance right now is that. The numbers indicate it is Tiger-like in what he did in, in 2000 or 2001. Mm-hmm. My only pushback, like, I I think you're he right. Doesn't have the, he's, he doesn't have the sizzle. He does not have the allure, no, the no, attraction no, no. of that's, drawing that's ridiculous TV yes. numbers. That's that's a whole different thing. That's a different conversation. But what he's doing on the golf course yes. right now. Yeah, nobody's done it since Tiger. I, 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 I think we can acknowledge that and say you're right here, but in the same way. It doesn't way, feel the same. Well, I mean, not yet. Is he going to win the Open Championship? Is he going to win the U.S. Open, the PGA? I mean, well, I, the PGA is at Valhalla in uh, in Louisville. I just think sometimes um, the instant Tiger aura that we do with these dudes is a bit. Tiger won eight majors in his first five years. Scotty has two and six. Like, there's a difference here with what we're seeing, and I think he what you're saying is right, but I. I, I don't know. Go win one of the other majors. It's a big deal. I think the truth is in what both of you are saying, right? Like, there's an aspect of he's 27 years old. He has two majors. That's remarkable. He's yes. the third youngest to ever yeah. get his second green jacket. Like, he's in those kind of categories now, but it's about sustaining it. And that's always the hardest part. To Swag's point, it's more of a numbers based analytical approach. No, I agree with that. When yes. you look at, I'm you not poo pooing Swag's right. numbers. Yeah. I'm just saying. When you like, look at strokes gain, when you look at all the metrics that we evaluate, proximity to the hole right. right now, he's like six feet ahead of the field. <laughs> there is nobody that comes close. Like other guys have won more majors. Rory won four in a bunch right out of the gate. His numbers weren't yeah. like this when he was winning those right. majors. So I think that's the argument for Scotty. There's a number, there's a million numbers behind this that just blow your mind. He has now made $12.6 million in on course earnings in the the last 35 days that is three hundred sixty-one thousand dollars per day if you just give out the average cut to a caddy which is about 10 percent ted scott his caddy who now has four green jackets because he got two with bubba he has earned 1.2 million dollars this year his caddy has that places him 54th out of pga tour golfers <laughs> that's more money than rory mackle or excuse me uh victor hovland and ricky fowler have earned on the golf course this year scotty scheffler has been so good his caddy Hovland's has been that bad huh? made more on the course yeah. than victor hovland and ricky fowler wow. like he he now has three wins this year in zero rounds over par. He does not have a round of golf yeah. over par. I think he has one or two rounds at par. He had one this week on Friday. He shot seventy two, yeah. and like, he had one a couple of weeks ago <laughs> when the streak ended of subpar yeah. rounds. The one thing about him um, that's special is just how how locked in he is to the point where he like bogey, birdie, yeah, bogey, His bounce back, factor. amazing, 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 yep. and like he never. Looks shaken. The moment on the tournament to me was 13 on Saturday. For those who watched on Saturday, yeah, he I think he doubled 10 mm-hmm. and bogeyed 11. And it was the first time you're like, oh, he's staggered Coming here. apart. And a major champ, we don't really see this from Scotty very often. And what did he do on 13? <laughs> he made, I think, the only eagle of the day. Yeah. Reclaim the lead. And you're like, oh, okay. Remember where yeah. Nikolai Hoyegaard was in the lead on yeah. the 10th hole? Now he's seven shots back. Uh, I want to go to a little winner-losers outside of Scotty. Scotty's an obvious one. We got a cut from Scotty that we'll get to. I also want to play a fun game, Rate That Call. So I got a couple more things on the Masters we'll get to. We got some NBA playoffs to get to at the top of the hour. Dirt and Sprague back with more, but for Swag with a sports update. Now, now, from the Fan Sports Desk, a Sports Center update on 1080 The Fan. Brought to you by AE Plumbing, Heating, and Air, serving Portland, Southwest Washington, or the Gorge Online at AE Heating and Cooling.com. It's hard to stop a train. First on the fan, nobody could stop Scotty Scheffler. For the second time in three years, pulled away from the field on Sunday at Augusta, wins the 88th playing of the Masters by four shots, 11 under par. He shot a 468 in the final round, including birdies on six of his final 11 holes. Scheffler has won three of his nine starts this season with eight top 10 finishes. While the NBA season mercifully ended for the Blazers Sunday with a 121-82 loss to the Kings, putting them in a tie for the third worst record in the league and an over 13% chance to get the number one overall draft pick, the rest of the association now preparing for the postseason. The play-in tournament all set in the West on Tuesday. Lakers and Pelicans play in New Orleans. The winner gets the seventh seed and will face the Nuggets. Loser gets the winner of the Warriors-Kings game. That'll be played on Friday. In the East on Wednesday, Sixers and Heat face off. The winner takes on the Knicks in round one of the playoffs. The loser will take on the winner of the Hawks-Bulls game on Friday. 
10 days to the NFL Draft. Colts locking up former Ducks defensive lineman DeForest Buckner with a two-year contract extension worth $46 million. More sports scores and stories in 30 minutes. Jason Swigart from the Fan Sports Desk. Listen live or on demand at the Odyssey app, the Fan's desktop player, or tell your smart speaker to play 1080 The Fan. This is your home for year-round NFL coverage. The Odyssey app. This is Dirt and Sprague on 1080, The Fan. Well, we've got a color analyst on this show for hockey. I don't do any play-by-play stuff, although I did do a Les Schwab Invitational Day where I called three games. Award-winning broadcast. What one? The Les Schwab one you were on. Oh. It won a Peabody. Thank you. I still have that. You can see it whenever you uh, watch my gambling show in the background. <laughs> but there's only one true play-by-play man on this show. Yes, there is. It's Jason Swigard. 
and he is the voice of your Portland Pilots men's basketball until they lose, and then it's women's basketball because the women's team's actually better than the men, and he secretly wishes it was women's basketball. He is, uh, yeah, he is skilled enough to do a rate that call. Now, Jim Nance is Jim Nance, okay? But I want sincere Jason Swigard reaction. This was the final call of Scotty Scheffler tapping in his par putt, which he hit a beautiful chip shot up into. And Jim Nance's call of Scotty winning a second green jacket. His stardom confirmed. And then he just let it go. He and laid out for like close to two minutes. He did. Which is a veteran move. Because most guys, if you're you're trying to have the signature moment on the call, your 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 tendency is to give it something a little more, as opposed to somebody that's been in that chair forever and understands the moment. So kudos <laughs> to him for laying out. So rate the call though. Uh not his best. Um, uh, but I think I think this was a difficult one because you don't want to be, do something too cliche, you know. If you wrap in his expectant, you know they're expecting their first child, and that was a huge theme of would he take the call. Um, so it was good that he didn't get too gimmicky or cliche with everything else that was going on. Yeah, I think he's already a star. I don't know that his star is necessarily confirmed. That was kind of my pushback. Is like this dude's been the best golfer for like so two years. What yeah, are we talking well, I'll about? defend but, Nance a little bit there. I mean, he's only won one major. That's or true. Had only won one yeah. major. Now he's got two. Yeah, but for. For people that watch and follow golf, we've known him for it sure, but it doesn't like guarantee that you're going to win a lot of majors. There's a lot of players who are top of the world, number one guys who you feel like are going to take off and dominate the sport, yeah. and it doesn't always happen. What's the like list of two majors, of players with two majors? Uh, oh, in the modern era, or I, just all time? all time? I guess all time. I mean, time. Colin Morikawa has two. He now has tied Colin Morikawa. Would, there's what, 20, 20 to 30 guys maybe all time? I don't know. He I just... It was, I mean, we it's solid, Scotty. it's Nance, it's great. He left it out. He let the moment hmm. linger. Okay. Uh, but not his best. I would say I think it's also a really tough call because it was a foregone conclusion for five holes. Exactly. Like, it was over. He could have done his final call well, on you the could also say green. He, like, had, he had 45 minutes to think about it. I was going to say, that's, that's the other true. side I'd play, is he had more time to think about it. I just, I think it's hard to have a great call when it's anticlimactic. Like it was that was not a thrilling finish. No. That was a if you're sticking around, you're just waiting it wasn't, for the ceremony. It wasn't Villanova North Carolina championship <laughs> no. game finish. What about no. dominance cemented? Second straight jacket ran well, away not from the second field. straight. So it's second and well, three. Well, second years. and yeah. three years. Two and three sorry, years. two and three years. Yeah, runs away from the field. I'm okay with that call. I'm looking up guys with two right now. Here, I mean your your categories are Fuzzy Zoller. Uh, Johnny Miller, uh, Andy North, Curtis Strange, Bernard Langer only won two. I didn't know that. I yeah, they were both that. masters, I believe. Yeah, Crenshaw got two, both of them masters. Mm. So, I mean, this is the category. Angel Cabrera, Bubba Watson, Martin Keimer has two. <laughs> My, uh, I had a couple takeaways from the weekend. One was I I liked Max Homa a lot. I've seen him on some like golf YouTube stuff. He's very likable. He's smart. He understands kind of what 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 it is is what it feels like with Max Homa. And we got audio, and he had a great Instagram post. I thought uh, Max Homa big winner from the weekend. Oh oh bear with the A with a little low above Can it. We. That was one of my biggest things. Like, they would go to different booth announcers, everybody and they, said everybody said his name different. I, Either yes. he needs to, like, say it in the, this is how you pronounce it. You're getting or, mad at the guy. Uh, just <laughs> He gave him the name. It's up to the announcers yeah. to figure that out. I can thought we, we had settled we, on Obear. I thought Obear. We, I thought Obear yeah. was the settled upon answer. Can we... Can we get that down for everybody, please? <laughs> I just loved a little low above the A. It's really cool, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It's kind of fun to type in, too. Um... He was a big winner. Homo, a big winner. I also found myself, I I was really rooting against the livers, and I was quite enjoying watching John Rahm suck the big one. <laughs> Mr. I'm good enough to bridge this. I'm going to bring us back together. I'm going to bring us back. To, I love it. I, I like John Rahm. I just, I, I think I've reached a point where if I'm getting away from the money part of this, these dudes train their whole lives to play golf. 
And some of them, it's much like NBA or NFL players. They they kind of don't love it. It's forced on them. It's what they're good at. They're doing it just out of necessity, not because they love it and they're passionate right. about it. And I'm fine with Dustin Johnson's uh, existing. But John Rahm quite clearly came off to me as a guy that uh, loved golf, he enjoys golf. golf. He knows the history of knows golf. knows the history of it. And I kind of found myself just, yeah. you're a chump, dude. You took the easy way out, and now you're so irrelevant. Have fun. Piss off. Go play 54 holes. I'll see you at the next major. I won't know what you do in the next two months. <laughs> I I was rooting against him pretty loudly, and I was a little surprised by that. But I just the ego going into this tournament, his awareness of who he is in golf and in sports in general, I just, it's a shame. They, they, they copped out. They sold out their golf game to go make the big payday, and a lot of them have realized what a mistake it is. Yep. Nobody cares about these dudes. And I found myself rooting against them and enjoying watching them uh, suffer at different moments. I, I went the opposite way on Sunday. I was up early and watched the early Brown coverage on uh, ESPN Plus and saw that Tiger was paired with the one amateur that made the cut, Neil Shipley. And I was like, one... Kudos to Tiger for going in that fourth round. He was shot in the third round. I totally expected him. To, I was surprised he actually played the fourth round. Yeah. That's one how much respect he has for Augusta. I think it's only the second time he's played all four rounds yeah. of a tournament since but the COVID Masters. Like what in the last a, four years, he's only look, done it twice. You're an amateur. You already, you're the only one that made it. You know you were going to win whatever the, the low amateur wins, some piece of a metal or a silver plate or it's something. A little, yeah, a little bowl or something. But – <laughs> Eat some cereal out that thing go. the next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Hey, look at me. But I thought, what a cool thing! Like, that was the one of the highlights of the week. That was awesome. Just hanging out, playing around. The gal, all the galleries weren't there yet. There were still, you know, some people out there watching Tiger. But yeah, that's a Sunday that kid will never. Whether or not he has a professional career to make of anything, that was awesome. He actually played pretty well too. I think he shot like a seventy three. Yeah, like he had a good round. Tiger, oh, he blew was up, but... he was lagging putts from 50 feet yeah, and he was feeling dripping them in. His caddy, too, was a high school buddy who I think he played high school golf with, just a local friend of his, good buddy. He texted him when he found out. He he finished second in the U.S. Am, so he gets the invite to go play Augusta. He texts his buddy like, hey, you want to come caddy for me? His buddy looked like he's 17 years old, just a just a wide-eyed kid. Oh, Shipley he, looks like he's spalding from... He like totally if, does. Yeah. There was pictures of them like shaking Tiger's hand afterwards, just grinning ear to ear, mm -hmm. chatting down the fairway. I watched a little bit of that Sunday morning because it was just fun to see that spectacle and Tiger seemed like he was really uh, warm and welcoming and having great conversations. The Rom stuff, I couldn't agree more with you. Really, I, you felt the same way. I didn't. I don't necessarily root against live guys. Like it's not a rooting for or against. I I am somebody though that preaches that the grass isn't always greener on the other side of the fence. And financially, John Rom is secure for generations to come for his family. He already was. He already was. <laughs> um, I thought what you saw from him this weekend was pure regret. I thought you saw somebody who was miserable, who missed playing competitive golf who walks around now with a Game of Thrones logo on his hat, and nobody takes him seriously the way that they did maybe a year ago. And I, I thought that was evident from the start, his opening press conference, to him being around for presenting the jacket last night as the mm -hmm. past Masters champion. He's a guy who thought he was going to reunify the game, and that's why he left. He's now realizing that's not happening in the short term. Maybe we get there in two, three years. It's going to take a long time to untangle this. And so the next two to three years, are you going to be playing in shorts in the Bahamas with nobody at your events and events that don't matter, that nobody cares if you win, and then showing up to four big events a year and hoping that your game is ready to go against the greatest player we've seen uh, statistically since Tiger. So good luck for that because you're not going to be as sharp maybe as you would have been uh, on the PGA Tour. The Homa stuff, I, I thought Max Homa, obviously Scheffler's going to be the big story because he won. I thought Homa was the second biggest story of the weekend for not only the relatable nature of what he's been through in his career, it's a guy who lost his tour card. Like, he's not one of these prodigies who's number one player in the world, everything goes smoothly, he wins right away at a young age. This is a guy who's had to dig his way out, man. He had a great quote on No Laying Up a couple years ago about being embarrassed about playing in golf tournaments because he was shooting 82s and missing cuts. And he said, every time in my career I thought I hit rock bottom, I grabbed a shovel and I kept digging. Yeah. And it's an unbelievable quote in his perspective all week about gratitude and being thankful and appreciative of things in your life. But 
understanding and, and, and accepting the, the challenge that was ahead of him this weekend. I thought Max Homa was an absolute stud for all four days, and he picked up a lot of fans of the process. Uh, watching Bryson putt looks like Hulk, uh, the like Incredible Hulk having to putt. It looks really weird. It looks funky. I know he was hot with the putter to start. He clearly didn't have that at the end of the tournament. His short game was terrible. Uh, so awful. He also 3D printed irons two weeks ago and yeah. just got them approved. By the USGA. That yeah. would needed to be a bigger story. <laughs> yeah. I, he had never played with them before. He just showed up to Augusta with 3D printed irons that somehow got approved the week before the tournament that don't have as big of a miss rate or a miss hit rate, and they have a bigger cavity back. Like, what are we doing here, man? <laughs> How is that possible? Uh, I've got Nick Saban audio. I want to get to the Max Homa audio. We got the NBA playoffs are all squared away. We got a little bit of football to get to today. The Blazers season is now finally over. We can all say that finally, finally, it's over. We'll get to that today. Dirt and Sprague back with more on 1080 The Fan. But college grid.
This is Dirt and Sprague on 1080 The Fan. All right, we've got uh, playoff matchups that we know of. Playoffs around the corner. I don't know if there's any baseball stuff on the show sheet today. I got a little bit on there. Do you? I got just a just couple of nuggets. Okay, couple hello. A couple of weekend nuggets. One superstar is not beloved by his fan base right now. Okay, we'll get to that. That's exciting. Look at that little tease. Yeah, you like that? It's dirty, huh? <laughs> Um, I want to get to a couple things of audio. We were talking about Max Homa and you you retelling the story of Max Homa's kind of career and how it's unfolded. I, I think that was really good. And he became a fan favorite. He did a great Instagram post. It's very lengthy. I'm not going to be able to read it. But Swag pulled a clip from Saturday's Golf in the Northwest that he shared. And yeah, this was after Friday's round. This was after Friday's round from Max Homa just kind of talking about himself and where he's at. Most I would test like give most of that to those thoughts just of not needing to be better than I am. I wrote something in my journal yesterday that just said, however good I am is how good I am. I don't need to try to be better than I am. And I can just see wherever that takes me. Maybe it's winning this, maybe it's not. Um, and I'm okay with that. I know what I've put into this game, you know, trying to get every ounce back is doesn't really work and i've tried that part so i just feel like so much of it has just been from just making golf swings that feel good to me they don't aren't always the right one i would say you know for for what maybe a commentator would look at but picking the right ones i mean i'm not sure which shot would or which hole would lean in most to that but there were just moments of Trusting myself, like on four today and hitting the seven wood instead of just taking the four iron in the bunker. Joe wanted me to hit the seven wood and just take it on, but he said, if you feel better just hitting it in the bunker, we can do that too. Um, so I guess that's just backing myself a bit. But then other times of playing just the low driver I've hit around here in the wind instead of trying to hit the high cool one at times when the wind was off the left because it just doesn't fit me. So just being really patient with that and discipline, I feel like is, um, I guess, a testament to those kind of the mental um, goals I've set for myself. And he basically echoed that in his Instagram post as well as like, you know, you can win without winning. Yeah, it sucks to lose. I didn't get the trophy. I didn't get a green jacket. But I had a really good tournament. I had a really good finish. And I'm proud of myself. Like basically just patting himself on the back saying, hey, it, it's okay. You're not going to win everything. And nope. in life, you can actually grow from losing. As you mentioned, his career arc He's clearly somebody that has grown from losing. Yeah, he really has. I felt it, it was so fun watching him play this weekend because he seemed like a different player. He has not played well in major championships, so he clearly found something. He has a label. He doesn't play well outside of California. It was kind of a label sure. that's been put on him. A lot of his wins outside of the Wells Fargo a couple of years ago, a lot of his wins have been in California. He's a California kid. Um, and I just, I, I've appreciated him from afar for a long time. He's a guy that you root for. He was on the Ryder Cup team last year, played really well in the Ryder Cup. So he's kind of an American hero in that regard. And he got hosed, man. That shot that he hit on 12 was hit probably 10,000 times this weekend. Over-exaggerating, obviously. But it was hit a bunch. It didn't move. And it ended up going, like, to, to have it go into the bush and not come out is, like, how many times did we see that thing go up into the pine straw and then yeah. come down or just ricochet into the bunker? If he lands it six inches further back, maybe it just kind of holds up there on the back of the green. He makes an easy par. The weekend could have been different. But I think it spoke to the bad break that he got leading into the perspective that he had of like, I'm doing everything that I can. I'm putting every ounce of energy that I have into my profession. If I win, that's awesome. If I don't, it's not because of anything that I didn't do. And sometimes in golf, you just get a bad break. And he got a really bad one on 12 yesterday. Uh, other big golf superstar at Augusta this weekend was Nick Saban. Nick Saban's <laughs> Nick retired. Saban. He's hanging out at Augusta. And Laura Rutledge was there and asked Nick Saban about his retirement life. And, uh, you know, he's at a golf tournament. He referenced that he's played Augusta multiple times, by the way, in this interview. He's Nick Saban, man. He does what he wants. And Well, he doesn't always do what he wants. He <laughs> ah. has to do what he's told to do what he wants because uh. of Miss Terry. Has Miss Terry wanted to kill you yet? You know, the day after I retired, I got the 12 commandments of retirement. <laughs> um, so I've tried to live by them. <laughs> um, but I found out that if I do my chores... Then I can go play golf. <laughs> so I get up early and get my chores done, and then it's like, now do I have a free pass to go do what I want to do? Nick Saban, 70-year-old <laughs> child. I love it. 
He's one of us, <laughs> one of us. When I try and rope in a golf round, how many things do I? How many <laughs> things on the list do I need to check off before the wife says, "Go ahead"? You've never honey, seen you can go dirt move so fast as a Saturday morning <laughs> to get through the honey do list All right, and make that take tea the trash. Time. Yeah, we got to do a little food prep. We got to make sure the baby's fed. We Did Miss do- Michelle <laughs> give you the okay? Miss Michelle said I could play golf today. Let's start doing this. Let's let's. <laughs> Let's as a as a respect to Nick Saban because we may not be the biggest Saban fans, right? He's a red ass, <laughs> dude. One, dude. One. <laughs> I'm gonna start calling my wife Miss Lynn. Maybe that's a thing we got to do. Just, Just show him that respect. Yes, Come I think that's over. our respect to Nick Saban and what his career was in college football. Miss Lynn's preparing a wonderful <laughs> meal tonight. It no, just, she's not. Miss Lynn doesn't weird. cook. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you say that about Miss Lynn? <laughs> I just—it was hilarious because I saw that, and it—it it was like a glimpse into my future. Of if I ever get to the point of being able to retire as a as a, with the economy the way that it is and retirement sure. plans the way it is, that's exactly how I'm going to be. I would agree with you, but if you had Nick Saban money, you're not doing chores because you're paying a staff to do your chores. So <laughs> I, right. I, if you were Nick Saban, that's not true, but your life, yes, I, I agree with it. We're going to hire somebody to take the trash out. Uh, let's move on from Augusta. Let's go. NBA has got the playoff matchups. I, I think it's going to be juicy. I think we're going to have a good playoff. It may end in a dud with the... One seed, or not the one seeds, but Boston and Denver. But I think the journey there is going to be really fun, wild, unpredictable. We'll give you the matchups, run through that. The Blazer season is over. Loaded second hour. Dirt and Sprague on the fan. Have a big event coming. The fan. The algorithm we're using is not perfect. An Odyssey station. Now, 
Now, from the Fan Sports Desk, a Sports Center update on 1080 The Fan. First on the fan for the second time in three years, Scotty Scheffler pulling away from the field Sunday at Augusta. He wins the 88th playing of the Masters by four shots at 11 under par, shot a 4 under 68 in the final round that included birdies on six of his final 11 holes. Scheffler now has won three of his nine starts this season and has eight top 10 finishes. The NBA season mercifully ending for the Blazers Sunday in a 121-82 loss to the Kings that now puts them in a tie for the third-worst record in the association. They have over a 13% chance to land the number one overall draft pick. Rest of the association getting set for the postseason. The play-in tournament starts on Tuesday in the West. Lakers and Pelicans in the 7-8 game from New Orleans. The winner it gets the two-seed Nuggets in the first round. Loser faces the winner of the Warriors-Kings game. That'll be played on Friday. In the East, on Wednesday, Sixers and Heat are the 7-8 matchup. The winner gets the Knicks in the first round of the playoffs. The loser will take on the winner of the Hawks-Bulls game on Friday. More sports scores and stories in 30 minutes. Jason Swigard from the Fan Sports Desk. Listen live or on demand at the Odyssey app, the Fan's desktop player, or tell your smart speaker to play 1080 The Fan. Tired of getting dinged by subscriptions? We won't send you a bill. Portland's sports leader, 1080 The Fan. It's time for Dirt and Sprague. We have a trophy here that we're going to present. It's the World Championship Trophy, and it goes to the world champion, Portland Trailblazers. With Andy Dirt Johnson. You are going to go back to throw the ball. Sets up, left, throws toward the corner of the end zone. It is intercepted. Intercepted. The Ducks have the ball. Down to the 35, the 40. Kenny Wayne's going to score. Kenny Wayne's going to score. 20. And Brendan Sprague. Smith and to Simon to Simon to the round. Dirt and Sprague on 1080. The Fan. All right, welcome back in. Hour number two, Dirt and Sprague here on Portland Sports Leader 1080. The Fan, the Odyssey app, 99.5 HD2, and of course, YouTube.com backslash 1080 The Fan. I've also been told we're on Twitch. I'm big on Twitch. Do you have Twitch? No, but I think we're Twitch celebrities. You're big on, but you're big on Twitch. We're big on Twitch. Okay, we're, right. we're a big deal on okay. Twitch. Uh, Blazer season is wrapped up. It's finally out of its misery. (laughs) Uh, Will they be worse next year record-wise is a poll question at Dirt and Sprague. We put up the uh, last night. We had one person that responded on Twitter that said they watched the game yesterday. Yes, sickos hours, but they they, they watched it for comedic reasons. I watched the game yesterday because this Blazer team under Billups is the best awkward comedy on television. Every time they cut to Billups, the Curb Your Enthusiasm music should have been on full blast. (laughs) Bump, 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 bump. Swag. Let's do this. I don't want you to forget, because I will. I want to have that that soundtrack. I want that as a just continuous running thing. And tomorrow when we go through the Billups cuts, <laughs> I want to play it very gently behind Chauncey Billups talking about the season. I cannot wait to hear quotes today about how they're going to improve the roster and get ready to compete when we all know internally they're going to tear it down to the studs because they want Cooper Flag. They're going, yes. He, he was but in Portland, Chauncey's by the gonna, way. He was in Portland yeah. this weekend. Everybody's raving about him. He's going to be the number one pick in the draft. And yeah. I can't wait to hear all the pause. You know, next year if we stay healthy, we could really push for a play-in spot. Next, I, I love seeing Blazer tweets grading players uh-huh. this year. Worst weekend, team in the West. Giving Delano Banton an dead A- last for his season. Like, 15 oh out of 15. When was the last time we were dead last in the West? Was it that 05 06 season? Oh, my boy. Been. I think it has to be boy. that. Boy. Would they that's... lose their last 13 in a row there for Caleb or something? God, dude. Let me see if I can pull up this, the standings from that season. Okay. Well, oh. season is over. Uh, Dirt will look that stat up. We was will... it 04 05 or 05 06? 05 06, okay. I think, is the year they won 21. They matched the win total <laughs> of that team. Uh, oh, we were the worst team by 12 games. And one of the things I think you could add as a caveat to the argument what's the worst team in Blazer history? One thing I think you could point to this season in the running for 05 06 was historically bad and it got so low as an organization that we remember it. Mm-hmm. I won't remember this year. 
you will not point to anything relevant that happened this season in the Blazers' year. <laughs> and Yeah, this is truly a lost season. It really was, and there I think it's why it's in the running. There wasn't much expectation record-wise or for this team to be contending for anything. And it was somehow worse. <laughs> and it was supposed to be a developmental year, yeah. and then all the injuries and all the stuff. It, yeah. It's just a loss, a complete lost season. I got no, t- yeah, I got no takeaways. The Blazers from this year. were on Gilligan's Island. They're <laughs> just alone. There's no hope. Well, we, I mean, it's trying to strap coconuts together to get a radio signal out. We, That's what they did for we, nine months. We largely will hear from time to time different seasons. Hey, no one cares. Hey, I didn't even know. Like this would happen in years where they lose in the first round seasons. This truly feels like a year where. Almost general consensus is like didn't didn't follow, didn't care. You certainly have your sickos. Mm-hmm. You got your people that will watch every Blazer game because they're Blazer fans. That's there's no doubt that exists. But this one amongst just a few in franchise history stands out to me as like, <laughs> oh, okay. Didn't know their season was over. You the other day didn't even know they were playing a game. No, I had no clue. You texted about a game in the first half, and I, I didn't even know they were playing that night. I, I unplugged a long time. I unplugged before the season started, and I, I maintained that commitment of unplugging throughout the course of the year. Are you going to unplug next year knowing they're probably going to try to be as bad, if not worse, next year given the draft circumstances? I will not if they do certain things this offseason. So if they trade Brogdon, Ant... Grant, I will watch more next season. Really? I will watch more next season. Because the basketball is probably going to be a little worse. I'm fine with that. You're okay. tanking. It's supposed to be bad. All right. Next year is the year where you want the number one odds for the lottery. And if we do this ridiculously dumb one-toe-in, one-toe-out thing where we're not bad enough, but we're not good enough, clearly, I just, I'm done with it as a fan. I don't understand it. We drafted a guy. We traded away the best player in the history of our franchise. Debatably, yes. Last offseason for the right to draft Scoot Henderson. We didn't want to trade that pick. We didn't want to use up that asset. We wanted guys on rookie contracts, but yeah, Jody's willing to pay everything. We wanted a rookie contract and we wanted a rebuild. Whatever. You want to tell me that's right or that's the right move? Okay, I'll listen to the argument. He needs to play and start 82 games next year. Like this is like you're going into year two. I you want to use the whole argument? He's 19. We we got to have veterans around him. Like fine, whatever. How did that help him this year? How did having Malcolm Brogdon on the roster help him for the first half of the season? Well, he finished strong. He did finish finished strong. When he and finally 11. started playing every game and wasn't sitting behind people in the rotation. We also got that veteran help on the bench. This guy is the future, and if we keep Anthony Simons and Malcolm Brogdon on this roster, I will not watch next year. I think I'm that, out. I think that's fair. I'm just not, like, what are we yeah. doing? We were supposed to suck. We want to see what we have in the young guys. If you tell me next year our backcourt, for as many games as they are healthy, uh, possible to start, you tell me the starting backcourt next year is Scoot and Shaden, I will watch far more Blazer basketball than I will caring about if Malcolm Brogdon goes for 19 right. and we get a win in November and Blazer fans go, maybe we turn the corner. No, this team's going to be one of the worst in the NBA. It should be. You're supposed to lose. That's the whole point of tanking. And stop with this play, you know, playing veterans crap. It'd be too weird to try to be better. <laughs> That's why I'm really excited to see the quotes it would, today. It would just wouldn't make any... Well, we know what the quotes are going to be today at 9.01 when it's Chauncey, right? Like, Joe... I think Joe learned from that trade deadline presser of the chips all in thing. I, I think he learned from it because I think you can take some of his quotes. Although yeah. at the draft, he did have a weird... Yeah, I totally think Damon Scoot can coexist. Like <laughs> that was our stance for a while. That was that? One, you know I like Joe. <laughs> Seems like a good dude. He's had two of some of the most awkward, weird press conference yeah. things. And you'd think for as long as he sat there from behind the scenes, then watch Neil go out there and flail away. We're a fifty-three win team. Yeah. You'd learn. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to go too we far. We don't no. need to overextend ourselves yes. in the press conference. And at the deadline, I thought he basically did that. He cut his answers down and was like, "Yep, we're we're developing." And that was it, you know. Versus like going on, Chance, Chance, Chance already has quotes of, "I think we're going to push for the playoffs next year. <laughs> I think this team's going to be better, and I can't wait to develop it." <laughs> Like, if that's what he's going to say oh, today. Oh, he's still riding high off getting into the Hall of Fame. My God. <laughs> My God. I mean, I, we went over it last week or a week before. I can't remember. But we ju- just look at the landscape in the Western Conference, and everybody else is getting better around you. So even just by default, you will be the worst team in the West next year. Do you want to know a fun fact? What do you got? Jeremy Grant, being here three seasons now, has never played a game in April. <laughs> 
He's never played past March 25th. <laughs> How much are we paying him on a yearly basis? 30 some what's million his, dollars a year. <laughs> I'm going to go look at the Jeremy Grant contract. Four here. years, 160, Jeremy. wasn't it? Wasn't it four years, 160? <laughs> that sounds about right. Uh, Jer- That's a Coach Callahan, oh Kentucky That's, kind of record. Yeah. Five years, one sixty. Five years, one sixty. So he made twenty seven point five eight six million. What spot track say he makes next year? If we don't trade twenty nine point seven nine three, the following year he's up to thirty two. He's going to make thirty six million dollars in the last year of that contract. <laughs> he won't be a blazer on that last. Thirty three year. <laughs> years old, making thirty six million dollars. Big impact player. I give him credit for finding the veterans who legitimately could be adding value to good playoff teams that are just. You yeah, know what? I don't need to. I can just. <laughs> Smoke a little weed, do a little zen. I don't need to play the last month of the year. I'm going to make $30 million this year to not have to care or compete. It sounds great. Malcolm Brogdon won sixth man of the NBA last year, and yeah. he was just totally cool staying here and not playing basketball. Yeah, I just have reached a point, like, I, I we did the two-track thing at the end of the day, Mara, where we're drafting Shaden, we're going younger, but clearly that's the route, but they're saying something publicly that's different, and we're stringing Damian Lillard along. We did the thing for years where... We tried to entice ourselves into the idea that CJ and Dame can win at the highest level, and we didn't pick a path. We never got aggressive. Like, I just, that's what I'm most tired of as a fan. It's not just the the rebuild, it's not the tanking, it's not just trading Dame. It's 10 years of wear and tear on my fandom. And if you want to get me back, like, go all in. Truly tell me that this is the route we're going to go. I'll say this because I want to get to the NBA playoffs because that's, it is going to be far more entertaining than anything the Blazers gave you this year. Yes. Where my criticism, I have been critical of the team this year, even though a lot of people are not watching. I knew they weren't going to be very good, Yeah, but I'm not one that says, well, I didn't think they'd be good, so I have zero criticism. I just don't think that's a world anybody should operate in. It's dangerous when that happens. You need to be critical of people and organizations. My criticism is I don't have real evidence that this coach makes anything better better now you can point to da people are going to do that look what he did he got da to turn it around and play hard uh you can point to scoots final 15 14 games of the season yeah, average a lot 18 of good games and 11 there, man. i i would just personally that's my only like hang up now if you want to say chance is not a good coach so bring him back next year because you need to be worse i'll certainly listen to that but if you also think it's important to develop Shaden and balance Scoot and figure the young things out, Rupe, Chris Murray, Dwap Reith, Jabari, whoever the young dudes that are going to be on this team are, Saar next year if they get so lucky, Cody Williams, I would just prefer to have a coach that I feel like, you know what, I might not see it in the wins column, but I can see it, I can feel it. I don't have that with Chance other than some players saying, yeah, I like Chance. Yeah, the players like him. Yeah, players also picked Adrian Griffin in Milwaukee. How'd that work out? (laughs) Players choose coaches. That is usually the biggest of red flags in that league. LeBron bumping Spolstra year one in a timeout when they're like 11 and 10 to start a year. You know, I've learned LeBron himself and actually what's happened in Miami, Spolster can coach. He knows what he's doing. But LeBron didn't like it at first because it's a little hard. It's a little difficult. You challenge LeBron James, yeah. and you're an unknown to Eric Spolstra. He showed me he can coach. I I just don't have any of that with Chauncey, and I know they're going to bring him back. Otherwise, he wouldn't do media day. Sure. They're not buying out his contract. They're that, not gonna. They're uh, Jody does everything for the team. Like no, she's not buying out that contract. He's got one more year left, or whatever it is, two more years. That left. is my only right now going into next year, knowing they'll be bad. Well, also in Joe, like trade Ant, trade trade the vets. My only real hang up is Chauncey Billups. Like I, I don't feel like I have anything in coaching. And again, maybe that's good for them for next year to get into the lottery. Uh, they don't want to pay out contracts. I get it. Um, but that's my hang up on them. Yeah, I I think Chauncey, the, the tough part with him is both sides of the argument are true. On one hand, you have people saying, well, what do you expect from him? This roster has been terrible. He was not brought in with a terrible roster, though. He was brought in to coach a team that had gone to the playoffs the year before. Things spiraled out of control. They ended up tanking at the end of the season. They didn't intend to tank last year, but by the end of the season, that was clearly the case. Yeah. With the Dame injury, there's not a lot of coaches in the NBA. There's there's zero coaches in the NBA that would have won a high volume of games with the roster that was put together this year. That's that's just true. But on the other hand is the point that you're making that I I agree with more than the other side, and that is... What are the tangible things that you can point to that they're getting better at? Where are the areas that you have seen them drastically improve? Like, what's their offense? I don't know. How would you sum up the offense? 
set a screen and then just play one on one and then hey dump it to DA now like Scoot did some nice things at the end of the year he did he got he gets people involved so maybe Scoot is the outlier here that like changes the flow of all of this next year and I'll be fair on that if that's what happens mm-hmm. but watching this team this year and last year I just I I don't I don't feel overly confident. It's like, hey, who's going to save us tonight? That's the whole point of having him as a head coach, too. We hired him. Well, first we hired him to be a defensive guru, and then he acknowledged he doesn't know how to coach defense. But he's a point guard who's in the Hall of Fame, and we just drafted a point guard, and we need to develop that point guard. Mm -hmm. So that's like the whole thought process behind it of like, hey, what a great guy to have mentor and teach this young player. Next year will be big. Next year is going to be massively important. Massively important. And I go back to watching Scoot get the 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 bulk of the run here I didn't watch much of it but seeing that he performed better late in the season it was cool for him I know the shooting percentage wasn't there but I'm I'm glad at least there's like a two-week stretch now where we can look and say okay maybe we got something to work with here the worst thing that you could do is to bring Brogdon and Anthony Simons back bury him on the dem- uh, on the bench or put him in a guard role in the starting lineup where he's playing off ball from time to time Scoot is a guy who has to have the ball in his hands he has to attack he has to set up his teammates that's the whole strength of his game He's not a spot-up shooter. He's not an off-guard. He has to be a ball-dominant point guard in order to be efficient at a high level in the NBA. And bringing Ant and Brogdon back takes away touches from the, one of the most important pieces of your franchise, and it would be a catastrophic mistake. So the Blazers season is over finally. They'll media day today right at 9.01 a.m. Typical dirt and spray. We miss, <laughs> right miss after. the window. Should we go an hour in a call and take them live? What do we think? Hear from I- Chance? What does Chance think? I want to hear Chance's thoughts. She wouldn't be mad at that. I'm curious to hear what he's going to say and how we're going to be a playoff team next year. Or does he change the tune a little bit? Well, you know, we'll develop guys. See how hard they work in the offseason. <laughs> Look, we want Cooper flag, so it's going to be really ugly. Capture the flag. <laughs> Capture the flag. Come on. Uh, all right. Coming up next, NBA playoff matchups are set. How into it are we? And did we peekaboo at this? Next on The Fan.
This is Dirt and Sprague on 1080 The Fan. Happy Monday, everybody. Good morning. A little Otis Redding to start it off for you. Feels good, doesn't it? Oh. This song will always give me gooseies. Always. Let me say, Scoot's rookie season official, 14, 5.5, and, and 3.1. What do we think? I think that's a little... I, I think his... His order, turnovers were quite a problem this yeah. year. You're not fully assessing it when you just list those numbers because the biggest concerns for him are turnovers and shooting shooting percentage and three-point percentage. Yeah, like he that, had bad shooting splits. That's the... And I'm not ever asking him to get into a 43% three-point shooter, but he's got to be better than he was. It has to be a threat offensively to the point where you can't just leave him wide open the entire game. And the overall field goal percentage has to come Well, up. I'd ask you this because two players... I think Danny's the one that... Uh, used the reference basketball reference comps like De'Aaron Fox and and Darius Garland are two players I believe that have been comped in terms of what their rookie rookie numbers were and what you think about them now and I I don't know where people would be at the NBA playoffs are about to start I don't know where people were at right now but like when I say De'Aaron Fox what do you think do you think (laughs) oh my god or do you go "Ah, good little player but the Kings, and they suffered some injuries this year. Obviously, Herter and Monk being out is brutal. But, you know, the Kings were a weirdly inconsistent group this year. Might not even make the playoffs. And the Cavs just, they're going to have to figure whatever it is they're struggling with out because this Mitchell Garland two Twin Towers thing, this ain't it. And we'll, I think they'll beat Orlando and get to round two. Sure. But maybe I'll be wrong on that and Paolo will be great. But what do you think of Darius Garland? Are people in high regard of Darius Garland, Darren, De'Aaron Fox? I just, if those are the comps, what do you think of those players now is what I would ask to the the true scoot believers out there. Yeah, I think the tough part with the comps is we're almost, we want to select the ones that validate an argument or an opinion that we have. Well, and that's the tough thing, right, is we so, are, are coming from an opinion sure. base. So Darren Fox turned into a great play. He's turned into a really good player. A really good player, yes. And I think he would be more than happy if Scoot Henderson turned into De'Aaron Fox. That would be great. You know who his numbers also comp to as a rookie? Johnny Flynn. Well, but nope, we don't want to make that comp, do we? No. Look, I am rooting like hell for Scoot. I thought it was great that he had good performances late in the season. Why I w- did you just really make me depressed? Well, no, I'm just saying, like, I find it hilarious that we pick and choose players that validate a pro Blazer argument to comp him to. That's not the way that this always pans out. Well, no. Johnny Flynn is a rookie, averaged just shy of 14 points per game, about four and a half assists, and about three rebounds a game. He shot 41% from the floor and 35% from three. The field goal percentage and three-point percentage were better than Scoot as a rookie. Well, the three-point percentage was what it was because— well, it was, He didn't take a lot. He took yeah, two that, and a half a he game. He was just before that Steph window, so they weren't shooting the lights out the way they I would now. argue Scoot— Maybe shouldn't be taking four and a half threes a game, but that's a different conversation we could have at a later time. I'm rooting like hell for him to turn it around. I just think next year, mm. similar to what we said about Shaden, and it's why this season was so depressing to me, was I was really genuinely excited to watch Shaden develop, to see the growth and the leap that he can make in year two in a bigger role. And then they started the season with him coming off the bench because Scoot and Ant have to be in the backcourt. None of that made any sense. The roster is too loaded at one position. Clean it out. But that was really depressing because year two is the year I think you start to see the development, the progress, the jump a little bit, and that will be the case for Scoot next year to see the main categories, 38% from the floor has to get better, and 32% from three has to get better. Turnovers are a problem. Turnovers per game. you got to cut those He down. averaged three and a half turnovers per game. So if you get up to 40% from the floor, I don't think it's too aggressive to ask for for a guy that finishes a lot around the rim. Get me to 35%. I was going to go 34. Let's get to 35% from three. Then I think you're making progress and you're going in the right direction. Um, I did not have back-to-back Blazer segments on the show sheet there. I season didn't. ended. Well, the season did end, and we had a rookie in the top three, and I think assessing how we all feel about Scoot. It's just it's it's hard, man. The, the age of it, the experience, how he developed from the first game that he played – To the last game where, you know, 30 and 10 at home against the Rockets is a nice little game to feel good on. He looked much better late in the season. The tough part about late in the season is a lot of other teams. What are teams playing for? Yeah, that's the tough thing. He had a great game against Charlotte. It's like, dude, you're playing. I have already, I know you're good against the G League. I saw you in the G League. You were really good. You're playing G League teams late in the season. It's just hard to compute. Uh, Didn't get to the NBA playoffs and having all the matchups squared away and what we think of the playoffs that are going to start soon. So I'll ask you this. Did you take a peekaboo? 
on Fox, Ohio State spring football game, because I did. I watched like half of it. I'm really jealous, and now I kind of want to make fun of you, because you make fun of me for liking spring football. Did you like watching it? Do you have any big takeaways? I have it on the DVR. I was too glued to the Masters. I did uh, not have time. Big takeaways? I feel... Hmm... Big takeaways. Yes, I spring make, game takes. Give them to me. Let's go. I feel I make fun of you because <laughs> you're one of the Duck Twitter people that, like, go crazy if Dante Moore throws a 30-yard bomb. Hey, he's looking really good in practice right now, man. My takeaway on high State is I am a little surprised how unsure they feel at quarterback, mm. and it's a development to watch. I still think Will Howard will end up winning it, but they certainly did not sell Will Howard as this end-all, be-all starting quarterback. They got the five-star kid, third string, and they got the other kid, uh, Keen Holtz, Kine Holtz. Yeah, he played a little bit in the bowl game. He played in the bowl game. He is the backup quarterback. So it seems to be a little bit of quarterback uncertainty. Mm. They're loaded everywhere. Their their yeah. new wide receiver is supposed to be the next big thing in football. You can see it. He, he wasn't like he was out there lighting up the defense, but you <laughs> right. can just see him ca- go, oh, that's an 18-year-old. That's incredibly crazy that that kid – was in high school a year ago. And watching less what, than a year ago. Yeah. Watching what Chip Kelly can do this year is gonna be fascinating because I I think many of us believe that the football mind is still there. He's just not a good head coach because he doesn't care about not a leader. Roster management he's not just a not leader. a leader. But if you just get him into the nerdy X's and O's of football, yes. what can he unlock? I have it on the DVR and I will be watching this week. So my Ohio State spring game takes are coming. Just prepare yourself. I was a little disappointed they didn't boo when they chose to punt at their own 40. And we're punting on our own 40 in a spring game? They're practicing pin punts. You know, yeah. That's the thing about spring. is like they yeah. practice dumb things that are important, <laughs> but I don't want to watch it. I saw Phil Steele went uh, scorched earth on Ole Miss because they had a spring game, and he was all excited to watch. Yeah. And he basically said it was a hot dog eating contest. They played yes. tug of war. It was seven on seven. Don't waste your time. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan Day, was made. he made sure he got the die before was the, the game. Was the die good? The oh die look good? God. Jet black. I mean, it's got to be. Yeah. you got to be dialed in. Uh, Urban Meyer calling out Iowa in the game, too, was not something I had slated on the uh, play-by-play. I love I love the Danimal. <laughs> they were um, punting, and he goes, what, is this Iowa? <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty good line. It was a good line. I love the Danimal. Not a fan of him being in Eugene. Really? I'm, uh, Urban Meyer, that is. Ur- yeah. Not Dan Lanning. I, li- I want Dan Lanning to stay in Eugene. He invited Urban Meyer. They did, like, a coaching clinic last week. Lessons in leadership. Like, what are, what are we doing here? You know, they live in such a bubble. Like, I'm sure Lanning's heard stuff, but, like, Lanning looks up to an Urban Meyer. He's won titles, right? He's yeah. one of the best of all time in college football history. You're not gonna, you're not gonna talk to Urban Meyer if he's like, "Hey, do you want me to fly out to Eugene?" <laughs> I, I guess. Want a free trip out to Eugene? And then he outed them on something during the Ohio State spring game. Lanning told him privately that in spring practice they do green, yellow, and white instead of first, second, or third string because they're worried about guys seeing that I'm third string and entering the portal. Yes. The portal opens tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be portal madness, It's going to be crazy tomorrow. And then Urban Meyer goes on the Ohio State spring game and says, you know, in Eugene they're doing green, yellow, and white (laughs) instead of first, second, or third. And then Lanning, they had a scrimmage this week, and he then had to answer questions about it. He'd be like, well, no, that's not really what we want to do. We want guys to mix and match, and we want seniors with freshmen. Damage control. He had to do damage control. (laughs) He's like letting all the secrets out, Urban. Shut your mouth. Stop letting coaches hit women and stay away from my program. Here's a hot take. Don't have a guy who is supposed to be, quote, neutral, but clearly is pulling for Ohio State still. Yes. Don't let him into the facility. I wonder who he's going to spill all the secrets. I wonder who he's going to pick on the big nooner when the Oregon and Ohio State play. I wonder who he's going to pick in that game. And he famously came to visit Chip Kelly and learned all the secrets of Oregon's offense, and then a couple of years later got to play them in a national title game. Absolutely. That was my other thought of, is this guy going to be back coaching somewhere in the Big Ten in two years, and now he's again walked around our practice facility? Get that snake out of there. I just, I in my mind, I have college football coaches. I have Urban Meyer. I've got uh, Nick Saban. Maybe a a Pete Carroll. I got a a group of legendary coaches meeting up at a downtown lunch spot like (laughs) Sex in the City. And Urban sits down. You'll never believe what Lanning's doing. (laughs) Drinking Cosmopolitan. And they're just sharing and spilling all of the gossip (laughs) and the juice. And it spreads around. And yeah, you told Blabbermouth Herbs what you're doing. Of course he's going to tell everybody. Yeah, don't tell that guy any secrets, man. Lesson of the weekend. Don't trust Urban Meyer. Yeah, so Ohio State spring game. I'm a sicko, but I, I have to kind of care about this stuff now. I got to follow the B1G. It's B1G football, man. Uh, all right. I don't know what you want to get to Let's next. Let's do the NBA playoffs. We'll okay. do the NBA playoffs. NBA playoffs. We'll get to that coming up next. Dirt and Sprague with First Swag with a sports update. Now, now, 
From the Fan Sports Desk, a Sports Center update on 1080 The Fan. Brought to you by Crunch Fitness. Memberships as low as $9.99 per month. Find your crunch time in Portland, Vancouver, and online at crunch.com. First on the fan, Scotty Scheffler, Masters Champion for the second time in three years. He birdied six of his final 11 holes for a four-shot win at 11 under par. It's his third win of the season. He's got eight top 10 finishes in nine starts. The NBA season mercifully coming to an end for the Blazers in a 121-82 loss to the Kings. They finished tied for the third worst record in the league. Their chances at landing the number one overall draft pick now over 13%. Meanwhile, the rest of the NBA getting ready for postseason play. The play-in tournament starts on Tuesday. Lakers and Pelicans in New Orleans in the 7-8 game. The winner will take on the Nuggets in the first round. Loser gets the winner of the Warriors-Kings game. That final game will be played on Friday. In the East, Wednesday, Sixers and Heat face off. The winner takes on the Knicks in round one of the playoffs. The loser will take on the winner of the Hawks-Bulls game. That also on Friday. Ten days to the NFL draft. The Colts locking up former Ducks defensive lineman DeForest Buckner with a two-year contract extension worth $46 million. More sports scores and stories in 30 minutes. Jason Swigard from the Fan Sports Desk. Listen live or on demand at the Odyssey app, the Fan's desktop player, or tell your smart speaker to play 1080 The Fan. The Hot Corner, now in its new time. Tuesdays at 7 after Isaac and Sue on Portland Sports Leader, 1080 The Fan. For more than 50 years, P.G. Long has been helping the Pacific Northwest with floor covering, cleaning, and restoration, specializing in working with multifamily properties and contractors. The team at P.G. Long are not only product experts, they have the experience and expertise to solve all your flooring needs. Whether you're building new homes, reflooring your rentals, or you need a repair done ASAP, the team at P.G. Long is ready to save you time, money, and hassle. Find them online at pglongllc.com. P.G. Long, the Northwest flooring experts. Hey, it's and guys, for those of you with a full head of hair, congratulations. Studies show that one of the most attractive physical features is a full head of hair. It sucks to be me because you know what the least attractive? Well, hair loss. And some say that no amount of cars or houses or success can make up for balding as it leaves the greatest lasting impression. But it doesn't have to be that way for a lot of you. For me, it's too late. But advanced hair has the quick one day solution for a lot of your hair losses that can make you look 10 to 20 years younger. No more expensive pills or topicals, just your your very own natural hair guaranteed to grow. Advanced hair has improved tens of thousands of lives, and I sure wish they were around when I went bald decades ago. Did I mention with advanced hair, your own natural hair begins to grow the very next day. So for your free, no-hassle consultation, call 503-832-HAIR. And if you qualify, you get $250 and 250 free hair grafts. That's 503-832-HAIR or advancedhair.com. Join 1080 The Fan and Odyssey as we all do our one thing. Together, millions of things for our planet. This Earth Day, we're teaming up with Free Geek for our Tech Now Drive. On April 19th, bring your unused laptops, tablets, and mobile phones to Washington Square. Free Geek's goal is to divert technology that would otherwise be recycled or thrown away, refurbish it, and give it back to our community at low or no cost. Our Tech Drive is Friday, April 19th from 11 to 4 in the Washington Square Mall parking lot. For more info, go to freegeek.org.
This is Dirt and Sprague on 1080 The Fan. Well, it's your time of year, buddy. I just had my weekend. I loved every second of it. I'm a master's nut. I'm a golf nut. And it's my favorite sporting event of the year. I sat on my couch most of the weekend. Soaked up every second that I could, and you, I'm going to miss get, it like hell. Yeah, you, you're not going to get me. If we're going to have weather like that, I'm not spending my whole Saturday <laughs> watching golf. I'll catch up at like the 15th. Oh, I totally, hole. yeah, totally fine. I'll totally, see the scores, yeah. and I'm out and about. Totally relatable. The weather was great this weekend. Um, but it is now your turn, buddy. The baton goes from me, from Masters Week, Masters coverage, the Masters breakdown, to the NBA playoffs are here. Oh, hello. Hello, it's, friends. It is time. It is playoff time. Uh, Do we have a pit bull song that can get us fired up? Turn up the t- turn up the sound a little bit. Black Eyed Peas. Yes. Come on. Give me something to get Kesha. amped. Um, I'm going to do the really radio cliche thing, but I'm genuinely curious of your answers. Three, six. Who you got? <laughs> How many games? How many got the win? The loss? The win? Could be a win. Could be a loss. <laughs> uh, you're playing games that you get in the Western Conference. Lakers and Pelicans tomorrow in yeah. New Orleans. Yep. And then you get Warriors Kings. So it's a TNT doubleheader tomorrow night. Uh, so that's the first one, Lakers and Pellies, is seven and eight. Winner of that gets the seven seed. The eight seed will play the winner, or the eight, the loser of that game will play the winner of the Warriors Kings game. At least I believe that's how it works. Yes. And then in the Eastern Conference, you get Miami Philly for the seven and eight game and Atlanta in Chicago mm-hmm. for the nine ga- uh, nine ten game. If you're buying, if you if I only gave you the ability to watch one of those games, which one is the most entertaining one to watch? It's L.A. and New Orleans for me. L.A. New over Golden State Sacramento. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sacramento has really come down to earth. That's why they're in this situation. They were pretty comfortably in the middle of the West most of the year. Injuries have plagued them. They've not played good basketball at the end of the season. And I already saw this. I saw it last year. Actually, they. They beat the Kings in a 3-6 matchup. They did. I don't really care about this that much. I don't think Golden State's going to win a round. And I sure as hell don't think Sacramento would win a round. I think they'd get swept if they got to the first round. L.A., New Orleans has juice. It's got juice. The Lakers and LeBron. Here's the thing. Do you want Denver or do you want Oklahoma City in the first round if you're L.A. and LeBron? I mean, you would much rather have uh, Oklahoma City. Because I think you can beat Oklahoma City. They're an yeah. upstart young team with a clear top five player in the NBA, but I don't. They have, no big, they have no bigs. They have no size. So I think the Lakers can win that series. But on the other side of that coin, you'd get Denver, and Denver swept them last year in the West Finals, but they'd get four... Five days off before they play their first game against Denver. Mm. And then there's like three days in between games in round one. So 39-year-old, 38-year-old, whatever he is now, LeBron, gets extended rest. That helps. So maybe it's an argument that they could push Denver and topple the beast, but I wouldn't pick them. And on the other side of that, New Orleans, I just think New Orleans should be a better team. I don't know what's going on in New Orleans. They have these runs where they look amazing. And then they can't, like, LeBron had 13 assists at the half the other night. That was a game they needed. <laughs> they slipped down. And I just don't get, I don't know if it's a Willie Green problem. Hmm. I tend to believe it's a little bit of a CJ problem. <laughs> um, that team should be better than they are. Now, I know Ingram's been out for an extended period of time now, and that certainly hurts. But New Orleans is weird. I think they should be better than what they are. So I think it's Lakers, uh, New Orleans over any of the East games because uh-huh. who cares about Chicago, Atlanta? Chicago's going to win that. The only one that I thought would be good over there is the, is the Miami Philly storyline. What's the Embiid injury status? Because I saw he went down again this weekend. He'll, he? he came back He'll in the play. game. Okay, yeah. he came back. He came okay. back. He'll play, but I don't. I don't trust that. The way some people think they're going, they could win round one mm-hmm. if they get um, New York. I don't. Hmm. I think they'll lose in five or six because I don't trust Embiid to stay healthy, and I, I'll live with being wrong on it again. Miami's not doing what they did last year, folks. Yeah, this is a different team. Jimmy's a year older. I, I just, I, I don't buy that they would beat Boston in a playoff series again. They don't have Udonis Haslam on the bench anymore. That's what it is. That's a big missing. That's certainly piece. what it is. Uh, I, I am now. I'm having like uh, offshoot thought bubbles pop up as you talk. Shoot them at me, dude. I'm so jacked for this. I, you know, I'm jacked. I know for you're it. jacked. This is your time. This is when yeah. the NBA matters. This is you get your run here. <laughs> the season started, and thankfully for the NBA playoffs, that's like a four month season because <laughs> this will go on forever. We're just getting started in April. When's the final? Uh, the NBA championship start? NBA finals? June. Like June second. We got like two and a half months of this yeah. crap. Uh, did Milwaukee tank to get the three seed, or was that a Giannis injury? Because the matchup is much more appealing in the first round than the thought of having to play Philadelphia. Well, okay, here's well, there's a theory on this. We don't know for certain. They were up eleven, and then 
uh, Orlando just blew them out and won the game. Blitzed them late. They didn't have Giannis. You can certainly suggest maybe they tanked it. Doc certainly didn't come off like that in the post game. I mean, you're not going to acknowledge that. Well, he seemed kind of pissed, actually, by the way they played. Ah. They've not been good under Doc. But here's here it is. They could lose to Philly. You can say that's not a good matchup. They lost all four to Indiana <laughs> this did. year. They did. Now, Indiana beat them when they were in the IST-type stages of life, so they were a better team. But it's not like they're going against Indiana. And also, we don't know what the degree of injury is with Giannis's calf strain. We do not. They've been very vague on that. So does he miss a game? Yeah. Can the Pacers win a game? I'll still take Milwaukee. I wouldn't gamble them because they're awful valued, like a minus 350 to win the series. But I'll stay. I'll still take Milwaukee. I don't know if they tanked it though. You saying IST, bro? I totally forgot. We this was our first in season tournament year, and Indiana was in the championship of the in season tournament. Indiana in LA, baby, the title, the <laughs> IST. <laughs> Will it play out in the playoffs? I because I saw that and I'm like, I would much rather play Indiana in the first round. I know they didn't do great against them in the regular season, but we had that memorable highlight of Giannis being an absolute psycho running after the game ball. Yes. Afterwards, and them getting into it a little bit. A bit of title. a rivalry here. Like I'm kind of excited about that matchup, and I think it's better for them in the first round to play. I would much rather take on the Pacers and get Embiid and that's just a bad matchup so I did have well, that thought because New, New York climbed they won their last five Milwaukee tanked their last two and all of a sudden you had a switch there where Milwaukee felt pretty solid in the number two seed for a long time also you know not not going as well for our buddy Dame over in Milwaukee this year he had the story we basically said I'm depressed I yep. hate it here I do nothing but watch boxing and play video games <laughs> their season has not gone well since they fired Griffin and brought in Doc Giannis is hurt Dame, I don't know if you knew this because I'm going to guess that you didn't watch a whole lot of Bucks basketball in League Pass. No, I did not. That's okay. But uh, interesting stats on our buddy Dame. Second lowest points per game since 15 16. Mm -hmm. Second lowest three point percentage since 15 16. Third lowest effective field goal percentage since 15 16. Third lowest field goal percentage since 15 16. He, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't figure out. He didn't quite figure it out yeah. in 82 games, and he played almost the entire season. Uh, I'd have to go look how many games he missed, if very many. He he didn't have a good year, and yeah. people in Milwaukee, they're concerned because of the injury of Giannis. Sure. They're also concerned because the guy they thought that was going to be clearly their number two, he's been shaky. He's not been as consistent, um, and he's, he's an aging point guard, and we like to cite Chris Paul, Steph Curry, most of these guys at that position, man, the history of the league says 34, 35, they trail off, and they trail off big. Mm -hmm. And there's some certain guys that have gone past that age or playing well still at that age. But you kind of have to wonder aloud, what's Dame going to be next year, and what is he year in two years when he's making $60 million a season? I mean, that was always the fear in Portland, right, of that contract Certainly. looming and how much he was going to make. What I would say, you're not all the numbers are valid. I have you watch much more closely than I did. What I would say to the fearful Milwaukee fan is, this is what matters now. This is what you're going to remember. Milwaukee was always going to go to the playoffs. Did you want to go in with more positive mojo, if you will? Of, of, of course, you did. But if Dame gets hot, you find your way into the NBA Finals. Is anybody going to be bitching and moaning about him having only 23 points per game? Well, no. If they get to the finals, but do you think they can beat Boston? I'm not. Can they get past the Knicks? Because we need Milwaukee and New York in the second round. <laughs> like we need oxygen. <laughs> yes, we do. I hope that's our second round series. Um, and there's just something about Boston that they have fallen flat, and they have come up. They have come up small in big moments. How many years in a row? They lost to Miami in the conference finals last year, an eight seed, a team that got swept by Denver and Denver in the NBA finals. Like yes, they climbed out of a three-zero hole to force a game seven. Sweep, by the way. Did they get a game? I, I want to say that was a five-game series. Sure. Okay. Well, I just, there's something about Boston that I want to see them do the whole thing. Um, and for Milwaukee, like, this is the time of year that matters. The big question for them is, can Giannis stay healthy? I want to get to some of the other series, not the plans, the series. And we got all of our, not all of our matchups, but the three sixes and the four fives. And they're great in the Western Conference. I'm going to dive into those. And I have a question on the other side regarding these matchups in okay. the playoffs. Okay. Right. We'll get to that coming up next on The Fam. Who's stinking it up? Woo! Do not go in there. It's time for Who's Stinking It Up? A sports lowlight that's uh, ripped from the headlines. We couldn't do diddly poo. Brought to you by Three Mountains Plumbing. Schedule your appointment online at threemountainsplumbing.com. It's hard to win a baseball game when you uh, give, four, give up 14 bases by way of walk. Very talented offense over there, and when you, uh, when you do that, ultimately uh, it's going to show itself. 
There's Dave Roberts, the Dodgers, the Doyers losing to the Pods. They're 11 and 7. Four of the five teams in the NL Central have better run differential than the LA Dodgers. Uh oh, looks like money can't buy happiness, huh? Still don't have a bullpen. Mm. Otani's gambling on baseball. Everybody's starting to panic a little bit. Billion dollar uh, roster. Who's stinking it up? Those 11 and 7 Dodgers brought to you by Three Mountains Plumbing. Make plumbing and electric services delightful. Get your time back with the pros tackle the projects you need completed. Schedule an appointment online. Three Mountains Plumbing. Three mountainsplumbing.com. Hey, everybody, Sprague here. Have slow drains in your home? Whether it's the kitchen. and Sprague Crunch, the hot topics you want to hear. What's the pressure? Don't sit here and act like there's no... We get nervous teeing off in front of a gallery on the 10th hole at Eastmoreland. Crunch Time, brought to you by Crunch Fitness, with memberships as low as $9.99 per month. Find your Crunch Time in Portland, Vancouver, and online at crunch.com. Crunch Time, brought to you by Crunch Fitness, with memberships as low as $9.99 per month. Find your Crunch Time in Portland, Vancouver, and online at crunch.com. Scoot Henderson's a really good player. But... <laughs> what was that one from? I don't know. I just saw it on the commercial break. I wanted to see what it sounded see what like. what it played. Yeah. He's a really good player. Well, it says, eh, and I thought there was going to be more of a, eh, eh. And it kind of just goes swag going, ah. Oh. <laughs>
Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, we we're talking NBA playoffs. The play-ins are set. They begin tomorrow in the West, Wednesday in the East. God and I'm then saying. we'll find out who the seven or eight are. One lingering question I have that you put a thought bubble into my mind of the play-ins tomorrow yes. in the West. Are we going to get a tank off in the 7 8 game? <laughs> <laughs> so going to be like a, somebody purposely missing a shot late because I, I, I did not realize that Oklahoma City had caught Denver for the one seed. They're tied. They must have won the tiebreaker during the regular season, I'm assuming, because they were both 57 and 25. And you would much rather play Oklahoma City in the first round of the playoffs. It's not even. It's a, not a it, debate. It's not, a it's not. There's not a no. single person on the planet that says, give me Denver in the first round. And I, I think I might tank off. You will not, I think, have a takeoff, a tank off, because the wild card is: can you? What if Steph goes for forty in the eight seed game? You could lose your next one, yeah, and you're out. You're out. So you went from like, hey, we're gonna lose because we won OKC. What are you doing? We're going home because Steph Curry went for forty five. <laughs> That's a dangerous game to play. And I also mentioned the extended time off in the first round between games, and the extended time off between the play in. And the first game of it is like a four to five day window. Hmm. Look, the Lakers, I don't think, can beat the Nuggets in a seven game series. I don't think any team can beat the Nuggets in a seven game series in the West. I'll be willing to be wrong on that, but I'm going to be willing to be wrong on that. I I also just have a fundamental belief. You're going to have to get through them anyway. I'd rather have more rest as an older player and say, did we lose in round one? Sure. Are people going, ha, ha. okay, what fan base is doing that? Because they're probably not in the playoffs anyway. Yes. But who cares? You got ha ha when you got swept in the West Finals last year. You actually pushed them pretty well. You were leading a lot of those games. You just couldn't close, and you didn't have clutch time numbers the way they did. Mm -hmm. So they swept you. It doesn't matter. At this point, you're LeBron. Your career largely made. If you get another title out of all this, just like cherry on top of a massive Sunday, who cares? So... I don't think you're going to get a tank off because I think you're going to want the Lakers. They're going to want rest. Yeah, it's interesting that if you like, if if you're the Lakers and LeBron at his age, you would argue Denver's the biggest team in the West, the toughest team to get through in the West. On the other side of that, yeah, is there an argument where you get him right out of the gate? <laughs> you're not going to win, probably, but is it better to play him now than LeBron having an extra, to your point from last year in the conference finals, uh, three more weeks, four more weeks of wear and tear on his body. And it's like an every other night. How many games point. do they play in the first yes. round? How many games do they play in the second round? If they are even get, able to get to that point, because there's no guarantee they beat Oklahoma City. I just think that's a matchup that is much more favorable for them. So there's that idea of it, too. Um, looking at the first round series that we know, so you got Minnesota, Phoenix, and the West. They got into it a little bit last night. I saw that. Uh, did you hear Ann Edwards? No. What do you say after the oh, game? God, I'm so excited to see Ann Edwards in the playoffs. Uh, he was asked about the matchup, and he said, well, they've got Kevin Durant. We've got Jaden McDaniels. <laughs> That's a great answer. Yep, they're the same player. <laughs> same guy, man. Same thing. Spider-Man. I, I love, love Minnesota in that. You love Minnesota in that series? I do, yeah. Uh, that's your 3-6. Clippers in Dallas is your 4-5. I have to acknowledge to you, unless there's an upset, the East series don't really do anything for me. Not super jacked to watch Cleveland Orlando. Am I wrong in that take? That will be the NBA TV series. That will be yeah. every game will be on NBA TV at four <laughs> o'clock, and nobody will watch it. Uh, Milwaukee, Indiana. I guess if Giannis doesn't play, they did have a little beef in it the was regular spicy. season. There's a keep an eye. Yeah. It's a keep an eye on. Check okay. in. Okay, see how the first two games go. The West series, though, I am over the moon about all of them. I can't wait to see if Minnesota can knock out Phoenix in the first round. Phoenix just signed Grayson Allen to a contract extension this morning. Four years, seventy mil. Their luxury tax bill is insane. Yeah. They have massive contracts all over and they're somehow still resigning their own guys and just adding more to it. That is an epic failure if they can't get out of the first round of the playoffs. Adding Bradley Beal with the age of Durant and and everything else they got going on. Not winning a first round series would be an epic failure and very similar for both the Clippers or Mavs. The Mavs made an all-in move to go get Kyrie Irving. They had a really good year this year. You cannot lose in the first round of the playoffs and the Clippers are once again, they had a James Harden for an all-in let's go win a championship. Yeah. The fact that two of those three teams potentially could be out in the first round, I'm very excited about. Yeah, because I don't know what the pivot is for Phoenix. I don't know. <laughs> There's no pivot. I don't know what the pivot is for the Clippers outside of Paul George wants to go somewhere else but he loves LA and and that's why part of the reason he's here. I I think the Mavs are gonna I, the Mavs are a heavy favorite, and that's maybe you question that a little bit. Yeah, what's the thought process there? Just the health of the Clippers, well, the I shouldn't say heavy, trustworthiness. Well, they've stumbled. Kawhi's sure. not played since late March because of this knee injury, this nagging injury. Harden's had some foot stuff. I shouldn't say heavy favorite. The heavy favorite, the bet, the bet 
The betting is on Dallas. The, the money's coming the in odds, on Dallas. Okay. The odds are Clippers. It's a minus 115 to a minus 105. Okay. So, so I was just going to pull up. I was curious. Yeah, what the it, were. it's really close in that regard, but a lot of people love the Mavs. I do too. I just, I'll take Luka. Luka can do that. I've seen him do it. Kyrie's playing really well off of him. Um, I'll take Dallas to win that and leave some uncertainty. I love Minnesota in round one. Um, we'll see what happens with playing stuff with those matchups will give us. And the three, six, uh, with Phoenix, Minnesota is fascinating to me. I, I have a question for you. I understand why the NBA is not as popular as football and all that. Mm hmm. I've always kind of wondered, and I'm wondering this more now, how come we don't do what we do in college basketball for the NBA to make it more fun or interesting? You were just in a big master's pool, and you came in this morning, and I didn't sign up for that. Shocking. You sent me a pool, and I did not sign up. I'm an idiot. <laughs> and you're like, somebody won ten grand in this master's pool. $10,000. And I can't fathom what's that, what that's like to wake up. It's like, I, I really won this. This happened. Second place took home 5K. It's awesome. Why don't we, to make it more interesting, create pools and do brackets for the playoffs in the NBA? Hmm. But and I, there's not as many games to pick in a bracket for that. But like, include the play-ins, and then include in how many games these teams win each. Year. Why don't we do anything like that for the NBA to make it interesting for people who don't like you watch much NBA regular season? They're not buying league pass. Yeah, they're just seeing what they see on national games or what friends that like basketball tell them. That's kind of their their. How come they don't do that more? How come we yeah. don't do that more? I think it'd be a great idea. Get people interested. You fill out your bracket. You enter a competition, or you enter some sort of pool, NBA playoff pool. Yes. Um, I think it'd be a lot of fun. The biggest thing, though, I think you would need to fix or to to enhance it to make it better is to condense the schedule a little bit. Because if you fill out a bracket challenge or an NBA playoff challenge. And it takes two and a half or two months to figure out. That's sure. a, that's a pretty long time. But if you give me like you know five game series in the first round, the play ins are obviously basically win or go home unless for the seven eight matchup. Then you get a second shot at it. I think that would then enhance the the NBA playoff challenge a little bit more. I think it'd be a lot of fun to fill out a, ch a bracket. I'm surprised that they don't do it more. Often. Well, I know you can do it. I think you can print one on NBA.com. I just surprised more people don't do it to yeah. just make it a little more interesting. Should we fill out an NBA playoff bracket show challenge show beef? I think we should do. It. We got to include the plans, though. You got to cool, you got to go plans. Yeah, got to have your plans. Uh, there you go. The NBA playoffs get underway tomorrow. The plans in the West, and then the plans in the East on Wednesday, and then off we go. The NBA playoffs are officially here. We got a lot to get to in the final hour of the show. I found my least favorite person. I got a couple of baseball notes I want to get to. A couple of football anecdotes as well. It is a loaded final hour. Don't go anywhere. Dirt and Sprague on 1080 The Fan. Get a great deal on.
the Fan Sports Desk, a Sports Center update on 1080 The Fan. First on the fan for the second time in three years, Scotty Scheffler pulled away from the field Sunday at Augusta to win the 88th playing in the Masters by four shots. He finished 11 under par, shot a 468 in the final round that included birdies on six of his final 11 holes. Scheffler's won three of his nine starts this season with eight top 10 finishes. The NBA season has mercifully ended for the Blazers. 121-82, they lose to the Kings in the finale. They tied for the third worst record in the league. They have over a 13% chance to land the number one overall draft pick. As for those still playing, uh, the play-in tournament begins Tuesday with the Western Conference. The Lakers and Pelicans will go from New Orleans. The winner gets the seventh seed and takes on the Nuggets in the first round. The loser will face the winner of the Warriors-Kings 9-10 game. In the East on Wednesday, Sixers in the Heat face off. The winner will get the Knicks in round one of the playoffs. The loser will take on the winner of the Hawks-Bulls game uh, in the 9-10 matchup. Ten days until the NFL draft, the Indianapolis Colts locking up former Ducks defensive lineman DeForest Buckner giving him a two-year contract extension worth $46 million. More sports scores and stories in 30 minutes. Jason Swigart from the Fan Sports Desk. Listen live or on demand at the Odyssey app, the Fan's desktop player, or tell your smart speaker to play 1080 The Fan. It's The Fan on FM. Go to 99.5 FM HD2 and enjoy high def 1080 The Fan. Oh, hey, I'm Ricky Bobby. And I'm Cal Naughton, Jr. Let's talk about kids on leashes. This is Dirt and Sprague. Fire Safety Week is right around the corner. And here are a few important tips you might want to listen to. Wrapping your kids in newspaper at bedtime sounds like a good idea. Keeps them warm. But guess what? That stuff's flammable. With Andy Dirt Johnson. Hey, we've all run around with an empty milk jug full of gasoline and lit it in an open field. But make sure there's a parent close by. And Brendan Sprague. What's better than a nap? A nap with a cigarette. I know. I do it. If you're going to sleep in bed, make it a hammock. So if it lights on fire, you fall down and wake up. Dirt and spray on 1080. Fire safety begins in your brain at home. The fan. Hey, let's do this final hour. Dirt and spray here on Portland Sports Leader. 1080 The Fan. 99.5 HD2, the Odyssey app, live on YouTube. Thanks, everybody, for watching this morning. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you can. Like and subscribe. We talked about the Blazers earlier today, and uh, here is our eh, synopsis. This team blows. <laughs> You'll be back. We'll be back. That about sums it up. Could have just played that for about 15 minutes. We, and We uh, will be back. <laughs> this, you know, this team blows. Yeah, you know, as somebody. Mac has a noodle arm. Somebody on, um, our, team, somebody on our team's got a noodle arm. Uh, you know, it's a Blazer season came to an end uh, this weekend. We talked about that earlier. A lot of Masters coverage in the opening hour of the show. And uh, felt really good. And I got a couple of little uh, nuggets here or there that I want to uh, carry over here to the final hour. I did want to get to this. Last thing on the NBA, then we'll move on because we got two months to do NBA playoff stuff. And I know you're very excited. I'm actually really excited, too. Um, Somebody's uh, texting and angry with the narrative around Boston. And it leads to a larger question. But basically saying, guys, the Celtics lost in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals last year. The narrative of them being massive playoff failures is a bit overblown. No, they haven't won at all. But the way people talk, you'd think they bowed out in the first round the last couple of years. They went to the finals and a game from it in consecutive years. My goodness. That's, I mean, that's much better perspective than I'm providing. And I don't mean for it to sound like they've been massive playoff failures. They've been good. They've knocked on the door. They haven't knocked it down. They're kind of a traditional NBA team in that regard. This is the way teams used to be. You kind of get close, can't win it, can't win it. Then eventually you break through. That's the way the NBA was for a long time. But I do think part of it last year was who they lost to. Like, that Miami team went on a magical run. They beat Milwaukee because Giannis got hurt. Yeah, but Giannis uh, came back during the series. I know, but what, he missed two games of that? They fell down uh, to a 2-0 hole. They lost the first two games in Milwaukee. He got hurt in game one. I just I'm, What I'm saying is if Giannis is at 100%, I don't think Miami wins that series, and they lose in the first round. They also were a quarter away from not even making the damn playoffs to begin with, mm -hmm. and then they got dominated. But That was one of the worst NBA finals of my lifetime. It was boring. It was over. They had no chance of winning that series. Giannis played in three games in that series. Three games. Yeah. What was it, a six-game series? Uh, I believe so. I think they lost in six. But also, Jimmy, Jimmy, he, he, he went, went off. Scorched earth, game six, LeBron in Boston, Michael yes. Jordan. 
Kobe, any great player that ever went, he went off in that. He was he was s talking Drew Holiday. Yes, like you can't guard me. And there's an aspect of like two years ago, you lose to the Warriors, and Steph goes crazy in Boston in Game Five. Like that's you don't criticize them. Tatum didn't play great in the finals, but. That's still that was an incredible season. I think part of it for me last year was who they lost to and just not having a ton of respect for that Miami team. And maybe that's mm. unfair. But I do think it, it begs the question going into the playoffs because there's a number of directions that you could go with this. Does Boston have the most pressure on them? Or is it one of these bloated teams from the Western Conference? Yeah, a, I, a Clippers, mm. a, a Mavs, a, a Phoenix, or these you know massive payrolls, but maybe losing in the first round. I don't think Boston has pressure on the players. And I think also part of the Boston problem, I, I actually agree 100% with that text. It's certainly fair to say out loud, is Boston going to get out of their own way and finally finish this? I, you know, my gambling coach, she lives in Boston. She thinks that they have a title if Ime is a coach. She just point blank thinks they have a title now if Ime stays the coach. Hmm. Joe Missoula's not highly regarded. No. He's kind of a weirdo. He did not have a great post. Like, he had some moments last year that everybody wondered aloud. Like, who watches the town four times a week? (laughs) Only weirdos. (laughs) It's a good movie. It's not that good of a movie. It's LeBron watching The Godfather before every game he plays in. (laughs) He's starting the first page of every book that he clearly reads, quote unquote, right? I think the other part of Boston, I'll get back to the pressure part. But I want to get on what that listener is highlighting. Do you know what part of the problem with Boston is for people? And I'll I'll just use you as an example here. Yep. It's the fact that they did it at such an early age. That Tatum was 19 in an Eastern Conference Finals yeah. going toe-to-toe dunking on LeBron James in a Game 7. But because they had got Gordon Hayward, but because they had gotten Kyrie, they sped up their rebuild. And so you had Jalen kind of like flaked in a little bit early. He had to build his way into that role. Mm -hmm. And Tatum was ready from the start. And because they got to the East Finals and lost to Cleveland and LeBron, it was like, holy crap. Now, I believe if my coffee didn't spill there, (laughs) if if I believe right, I think that was 2018. So they got their back-to-back years. 16-17, they lost in five to the Cavs. 17-18, they lost in seven to the Cavs. That's the year. So, So 18, okay? It's 2024. That's a long time in the NBA historical, how long did you have guys on your roster? Yep. But because they accomplished that, we almost hold it against them for not winning a chip. I still will I will go to my grave. They should have won in 22. They were a better team, in my opinion. Steph went hot in game four. Should have been a 3-1 series lead. They choked it away, tied yeah. it, went back to Golden State. Part of that was Tatum not having a good series. Tatum was awful in that series, and Jalen couldn't dribble with his left in the last couple <laughs> of years. But I look at the East, and I'm, I'll change my thinking here. I was on Milwaukee a few months ago. I think they could do it. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody these could do it. I think they are standalone. The pressure's not on the players. The pressure's on the coach. If they lose the East or they lose in the finals, now you get to the finals, I could see Brad Stevens not wanting to shake it up much. Say, we got to go finals, man. You lose in six to Denver, let's say it's let's Boston, keep, Denver, yes. like we all think it is. Let's keep running the experience yeah. back. You lose the East. There's not a clear-cut team in the East that people are like, hey, you know, Giannis, Milwaukee, Dame has to go nuclear to do it. I I think you lose in the East, Joe Mazzula's going to get canned, and he Mm. should. Go get a good coach. I'm not all the way in on Joe Mazzula yet, but I think part of the problem that exists with Boston is they accomplished so much early that because of their growth, the problem with their growth is they haven't won a title out of it. I don't think there's pressure on the players. I think there are far more teams in in the NBA that have pressure on them than Boston does. And they went back to the conference finals and lost to the Heat. I believe that was the bubble season, so they made it back for a third conference finals appearance and lost. Uh, Then they went to the finals two years later and lost, obviously, to the Warriors. Last year, lost in the conference finals to Miami. They got dumped early the year. It was Kyrie's last year where he was clearly going to Brooklyn. Yeah. And I think the team knew it, and there was this, like, Tatum was 22. Two, mm-hmm. 23, Browns, you know, you got these young, impressionable guys, and it's like, this dude's a little, he's a little off, and <laughs> a little, a little he's weird. plotting the next stop. <laughs> Our season's still going. They lost in that that playoff. So they've had some, they've taken their lumps, 
but I don't think the pressure's on. I, pressure's more on the Clippers. What are they doing? Phoenix? Yeah. What are you doing? I, yeah. Lakers, they got a great year in health from LeBron and AD, and they're in the play-in. Yeah, can't even be a top six seed. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I think there's more pressure in other places. Milwaukee, mm-hmm. if they lose in the second round of the Knicks or in round one of the Pacers. Yeah, you're wondering, did we make the right move? Was Should we have kept Drew Holiday and just run it back again? Doc's going to get fired or quit. Yeah. They're going to have to have a new coach next year. That much is certain. I just, I think there's... Embiid's never been to a conference finals. No. And yeah, he's injured, but like last year, what happened last year? The year they had Jimmy Butler, they lost to the Raptors two years ago with Ben Simmons. He's never been to a conference finals. Mm. I I think there is pressure in other places. If we were in Boston, we'd be probably a little hot takey with some of it, but my larger point would be we're the best team here. Stop wanting to shake everything the hell up. We get to the East Finals or the NBA Finals. I'm happy with that. Yeah, what's the reaction if they don't get there? I don't think it'll happen, but it, it's a panic if they don't get there, right? I think part of it is because of the conference that they're in and what you're alluding to, that like most people who watch the NBA all season, you don't give it. Like, they are 14 games clear of the Knicks. We never see this <laughs> level. Of, dude, I know you no, wouldn't have been surprised games, by it, man. But to be 14 games better than the Knicks and 15 games better than the Bucks with Giannis yeah. and Dame? The two and three seed. Like, they're an overwhelming favorite in the East, and I think that builds a little bit into it. Like, I totally agree with your points on the team in the West. Like, they're kind of in no man's land with big contracts. I don't really know how you unpack it and how you unload it and who you deal. Like, that, that is going to be a nightmare. Aaron Phoenix in LA if they don't win a championship this year, which I don't think either What's of them Golden will. What's Golden State's future? Golden Clay State's needs a contract, future, right? and Draymond's coming. Yeah. Like uh, you got a lot that you need to unravel there. I think part of the pressure aspect of Boston though is that the, I just for a lot of folks there's not a viable threat in the East. Yes, and if you fall short, that is an epic failure. Yes, but do, what do you do with a roster? Because you just re-signed Drew. Yeah, Chris Stapps was really good for you. Really good. Tatum is awesome. Brown it gets is bound, it gets back to the Brown thing probably. Well, here's what I think is looming with Boston in the playoffs. It could be it's cut and dry. They're just a great team and they're going to win the chip. When things get a little tight, are we are are we still giving the ball to Jason Tatum? Do you trust him? Or I think Jalen Brown is kind of showing a get the f out of my way. Hmm. I'm a dog. I think that's the looming thing with Boston. But other than that, I I just maybe you tweak the bench. And a couple role guys largely, but like I think this thing is just fine. If they don't win the East, it's on Missoula. Yeah, yeah. Coaching There's no issue. excuse to not win the East with that team this year. Does it feel good? I got to do like 40 minutes of golf. It felt so good. How did that basketball talk feel? Well, it wasn't 40. I could go another 10, but I understand why you want to pivot into other things. We have fun with audio today. I we mean, do. It's We got a couple days before the play-ins. We got a, what, two days? Uh, tomorrow. It starts. Tomorrow. West, West is tomorrow night. That's right. So we can get some more stuff, but yeah, it yeah. feels great. Feels great, man. NBA playoffs are here. Uh, I want to get to somebody who had a really rough weekend and somebody who is officially a villain of mine and we'll get to those coming up next on the fam it's time for a sports injury report the injuries and rehab that impact the success of sports teams brought to you by rock orthopedic i thought he was going to strike out 300 guys now that he's going to miss the season i think the phillies have moved a whole lot closer to the braves in the nl east as Tim Kirkjian of ESPN talking about, I'm assuming Spencer Strider yes. being out Shut for up. the rest of the year. Shut up. Tommy John, elbow blew up. Uh, not Tommy John, actually. What did he do? Uh, it's a tendon thing in his elbow. It's uh, not technically Tommy John for okay. the record. It's all fine. He'll be ready for next year. <laughs> Look, I think this is baseball in a nutshell. It's hard to really get excited about starting pitching. They don't go deep into innings, and when yeah. they pitch hard, their elbows blow out, man. It's a weird place baseball's in. Sports Injury Report presented by Rock. Orthopedic board certified specialists who diagnose and treat the widest range of orthopedic cases with care and expertise to schedule an appointment with Dr. James Ballard. Visit ROCPDX.com. The Caitlin Sensation. The Hawkeyes are headed back.
tigers dream of when they take a little tiger snoo. This is Dirt and Spray on 1080, The Fan. All right, welcome back in. Everybody watching on YouTube got treated to a nice little show there. What do you mean? Just you think Swag's number one, man. He's number one. Number were we one. on YouTube? We were on YouTube. We're on YouTube for the reports. I we stayed through the reports. Oh, I think you're going to get reported. I thought we got. Well, <laughs> is there a, is there a code of conduct that YouTube has that you can or cannot do? That uh, was a mistake. I'm, I didn't know we were on for the uh, reports. Sure, we're we'll find ass. out. I wouldn't have put that on the. <laughs> it was not. People enjoyed it. That was an honest mistake. People enjoyed I, it. No, but I yeah, not the bright people you're enjoyed it. One. I would like to publicly apologize. You're for that. number one. Kids are at home watching that man. What I, the hell is the matter look. with you? <laughs> What is your deal, dude? I'm rock hard with the rock hard report on the orthopedic report here. Yeah, but I I didn't mean to do that. I'm so I will never do that again. Um, should we ask the question? Is it time to panic? I love this question. I love I love asking it. How often Ooh. do you find yourself really panicking about sports? Like I'm I'm panicked that the 49ers are gonna take a massive regression. They just been good for a long time and sure. it, it might be running out i mean to be fair a lot of people said that coming into this year and sure. they led the super bowl with two minutes to go in and overtime also had historic health from a p- they did very important position standpoint Dude, you got brocktober bro they're not going anywhere okay, okay? you're All gonna right. be just fine great nothing to fear here uh, i do panic quite often as a sports fan i'm very emotional and reactionary from game to game week to week day to day i think we all are to a certain extent and then sometimes you have the ability to rise above and have a little perspective uh did anybody pay attention to what happened in seattle yesterday uh well i saw julio does not talk to the media well he did not yesterday because they lost did you see what happened to julio no okay. i you guys didn't see this lovely no, i love it I did not it makes the segment better so the Mariners are 6-10. and ten. Not great, Bob. They just lost two out of three to the Cubs. Yeah, Cubbies had a home game, home series. I mean, they do kind of everywhere they go. I can't stand the damn Cubs. Yeah, there's like seven teams that when they come All to Seattle, yeah. who, it's like, a home series. Let's support a losing Dodgers, franchise who's known Blue for losing. Jays. Like, get yeah. out of here. Dod- yeah. yeah. Um, Julio this season has a 186 batting average. I'm off to a great start on my take on the Mariners this year, I see. He has no home runs in 16 games. He has one extra base hit in 59 at-bats. Wow. He has struck out 21 times to only three walks. Okay? So that is the start of Julio's season. Not great, but he got off to a slow start last year. I think most people have the perspective of, eh, we'll see how this goes, right? Mm. They gave him a mental breather day yesterday. That was what they labeled it. Like, he's pressing. He can't get a hit. Below 200. Let's give him the day off. He needs a day off as as a breather. They're playing the Cubs. They're losing 3-2 to two in the ninth inning. They get a runner on first. DH. They think, I, well, not a DH, but how about a pinch run? Pinch. We don't want him to have you in at bat. Let's give you a pinch run here. You're quick. You're fast. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Put him on first base. Let's see if somebody hits one in the gap. Maybe we can tie the game here. He comes in as a pinch runner after having a mental day off because he's hitting 186 with one extra base hit, and he got picked off and they lost the game. <laughs> he then refused to talk to the media after the game, and people in Seattle – not very happy with their superstar player right now. Well, I mean, it's not a great start for him, to your point. He didn't get off to a great start last year either. Had 32 home runs and 103 RBIs last year. You know, this is the thing that does... You can name a lot of great athletes in any sport. Baseball, football, basketball. And I could not like them very much, but I'll always be like... The part of being a superstar face of a franchise, this is where it really matters. You're slumping a little bit. Your team's not off to a great start. You're the face. I don't have a Hanniger O's cereal box in my closet. I don't have, you know, (laughs) I I don't have a Jesse Winkler cereal box in my closet. It's Julio. I think you should have some Winkler O's in there, man. Uh, Well, that's a different thing. Um, But Julio is the face. You you, you have to be the face of a franchise, even in the tough moments. It's part of what... Mold you, you know, like go Bane with it. It's it's unfortunate, and I I don't know where Mariner fan is. Again, it's really early in the year. I think panicking by any of this stuff is dumb. Um, I don't. Does he feel like the player we thought he would be two years ago when he kind of burst onto the scene? And I know he had the moment last year, but mm-hmm. 
I, d- I just, I wonder if Mariner fans are kicking that around in their own heads, you know? Here's what I will say. I think there is, you know, like quite often in life and in sports, there is there is a reasonable answer to this, and both sides of the crowd are usually right. There's some up there that are panicking because, like, this is horrible. 16 games, one extra base hit. Like, that's a terrible start to the year. Mm-hmm. The team is floundering. They can't score runs. Like, we need you to step up and be a leader. I know he's, in, what is he, 23 years old? Like, he's incredibly young. Yeah. But he's been kind of, as you, to your point, he's been made the face of the franchise. Like, you got to take on a leadership role there. And to, to skirt out and not talk to the media because you made a mistake. Like, dude, own up to it. You're a professional athlete. You got a big time contract. Like, go sit down, well, own up to your mistake, and answer questions after the game like a big boy. So there's some truth to that. The counter argument to it, and I'm glad we got a text about this from one of our P1 said, Yeah. I went to the game this on Saturday this weekend. We had one guy in the lineup hitting over 200. <sighs> our ability to come through is worse than Ipe's ability to gamble. <laughs> and this is the other counter argument to it. And it's why, as a Mariner fan, like I've I've ranted about this with Blazer fans of the supporting and accepting of whatever the organization does. Like you're a member of a cult. If you cannot take a step back, be critical of what they're doing. Not just support every move. Not every player is going to be a fan favorite. Like, it's okay to point the finger at the teams you root for and say, you're not doing a good enough job. Yeah. I'm not happy as a fan. It's pro sports. This, yeah. There are some Mariner fans that will continue to do that and will support no matter what. I my, I would be ripping my head off if I was a Mariner fan because you know one of the reasons why Julio is having such a down year? They have no protection for him in the lineup. Right. Look, Go watch a Dodger game, mm-hmm. and you're going to see Mookie Betts and Shohei and Freddie Freeman have insane years. Now, I'm not asking you to sp- spend that yeah. kind of money, but the reason they're going to have such good years is you have to pitch to them because the next guy in the lineup, if you walk Mookie Betts, congratulations, yeah. pitch to oh, Shohei. and by the way, 4-5-6 is Will Smith, Teoscar <laughs> yes. Hernandez, and Max Muncy. Yes, Teoscar Hernandez is a forgotten part of the Dodger lineup. He was, like, the second most yeah. important Mariner last year. So, like, yeah. there's truth on both sides of this. He needs to be better, and he needs to hold himself to a higher standard, but also... It's really difficult when you can just pitch around everybody else in a lineup because they're all hitting a buck seventy-five, and then Julio's coming up with nobody on and two outs every time he's up. Yeah, I don't really have any response to what you said. You're laying it out pretty well. I just, I, I guess what I would ask you, I, I think you go a bit extreme with the labeling of cult. I think there's a lot of diehard fans, and you can't stop being a fan of your team. Uh, I'm with you in agreement of like we should be questioning and wondering aloud if everything what's done is good or bad or meh. I think that's totally fair. What what is Mariner fans supposed to do? Their GM said we have to win at a 54% winning percentage to be good. They don't spend money. I I see I think that if DePoto had the resources to do it. You don't think he would sign any of these players that come out on free agency? I don't know where it's coming from. So, the owner's well, not I, I suffering it's, financially. It's the owner being cheap. The root deal's not go. That TV network is floundering. Ticket sales up until a couple of years ago were pretty atrocious. It's an organization that kind of gets what they deserve. Yeah. they How they project themselves as a franchise and what their record has been, does that not line up to you? It squares it to me. That yeah, and that's, unfortunately everything he laid out, it still doesn't excuse the fact that like I, I think every good player that's young and comes up and has moments, we all think that's the next franchise guy. And that mm-hmm. that's kind of my point is most of these people are not franchise guys. There's you and, and maybe you're Julio constantly will be. getting compared to Ken Griffey Jr. Constant. if they <laughs> label you that. He, he's or got, Edgar. He's got yeah. a cool ass number. Forty four is a cool ass number. He plays yeah. center field. I went to one game. He threw a ball in every inning to a fan. Like everybody loves this dude. He's on a cereal box. He's at the home run derby. Such a fun name too, Julio Rodriguez. He's got gorgeous eyes. Everything about him <laughs> smells seems fantastic. perfect. He's big. Just he's built. He's felt like his ass. Oh my god! I could only dream of my daughter marrying a man like this. <laughs> But it doesn't always mean they're going to be a great husband. No? It doesn't always well, mean I they're going to be a franchise I think Mariner player. fans should adopt what the Phillies fans did with Trey Turner last year. Like a cheer support you crowd? Need to, you need to be supportive. Are they booing him, though? Like, b- Philly fan will boo you before they cheer That's you. That's true. Yeah, but... I just, you know, I, I, to your point about what should Mariner fan do, like, you, you know my stance on it. I, 
You want him to abandon fandom and become a Swigard. No, it's not ba- abandoning fandom. I don't ever support abandoning fandom. House Atlanta today. <laughs> I support pausing fandom and not financially supporting something that doesn't care about but, you. But what if you love going to baseball games? You I, can still go. Yeah. Well, but that's to uh, that, yeah, I see you say it. And, I, I don't mean, know if I would. Yeah. I mean, it's different if I had a baseball team in my city. Maybe I would feel differently you about would, it. Yeah. I think you would. Um, but there's just an aspect of like handing, like we had a Blazer fan text in because I jokingly said in the open of the show, why would anybody watch the final Blazer game of the season? Like, explain to me why. Somebody texted him, why watch Rockets Blazers? So he went back to the last home game. He said, I paid to go to the Moda and watch because you miss it. I suggest you go see Scoot's end of the half heave. Like, mm-hmm. I just, I, I don't love the idea of giving my money to people who don't care about me. And I understand that you enjoy doing it. And if you want to watch on television, that's fine. But, like, at some point, there needs to be more pushback from the fan base. And I think it's going to come as the year goes. If this continues, dude, that place is going to be empty by July. Well, I think there's a middle ground between what we're maybe going back and forth on here. There's a lot of people that just they just love to watch basketball. There's a lot of people that just love to watch baseball and be at a ball game on a Sunday afternoon, eating a dog, drinking a beer, watching their team play the Cubbies. But also, I think you can balance that. You want to go to the games? Go to the games. That's awesome. Don't also tell me everything they've done is a great move or every new player that's coming up is going to be a new piece of the franchise that's going to help them win. And turn. That's just not the case. Let's just hold the Blazer roster. This year's roster, okay? Let's re-examine this in three years if we're still doing a radio show and existing. <laughs> Let's go back and look at that roster and go, who's still on the team? Are we still talking about Delano Banton in three years? Are we still talking about DeAndre Ayton? Yeah. You're certainly not talking about Jeremy Grant. You're not talking about Malcolm Brogdon. You're not talking about Anthony Simons. You might not even be talking about Shaden. He's with Clutch now. Clutch wants their clients to be showcased. Clutch wants their clients to go make the get the bag. I don't know if, why would Shade, does Shaden scream rookie max extension to you? Not quite yet, but Clutch is going to want it. So I, I just, I think there's a balance and in between with what you're saying. I feel bad for Mariner fan. I do too. I wouldn't be watching every night on television. I can t- I wouldn't be a John Sukanic, but I also understand people love baseball. People yeah. want to go to ball games. I think there can be a balance between what we're talking about. Easier said than done, no doubt. I just it's it's one of those things of it reminds me kind of the of the Dame and CJ stuff that we went through year in and year out here of knowing that that backcourt can't win at a high level. You got two undersized guys who don't play a lot of defense. Like we know there's a limitation on how far they can go. And yet some fans and some people talking themselves into a different result every year when nothing the ingredients to make the dish did not change. The Mariners have not spent or taken building an offense seriously at all. So why would we expect any sort of different result this year? They might turn it around. They might compete for a wild card. Their pitching staff is still loaded. I'm not doubting that. They're going to be around probably 500 for most of the year, and that's good enough to be in the mix to make the playoffs. I'm not counting them out yet. But their offense is horrendous. We knew their offense was going to be horrendous. Here their offense is horrendous. Like We shouldn't expect anything different. Part of me does feel bad for Julio for all of that onus kind of falling on him and having to feel like he's the savior every game because he has no help. Um, Only final point I'll make on this. It sucks when the Oakland Athletics are better than you by record, and I don't, I didn't follow, I guess enough. What happened to the Astros that I'm missing? They're falling apart, man. They're they're a dumpster. They're not doing good to start the year. They're that, like six and eleven. Seven straight years in the ALCS might be coming to an end. Let's all pray. Well, you wanted to praise them last year. <laughs> Swing their sweet tunes. Yeah. I would love for my team to go to seven straight NLCSs. That'd be really cool. Well, you'd be asking the pressure cooker questions that we just did on the Boston Celtics. I don't know if you would. Hey, they got multiple championships in the mix. That can over overrides it. Okay, cheat and get to get to the highest level. I'm all for my team doing it. Why did you use the Dodgers? You could use the Braves. Our lineup, we have no pitching. I mean, you know. He's the Braves. I mean, your lineup's okay. We've won more recently. Strider, we won a, a real world series. Striders out. We didn't play a COVID bubble 60 game season year that didn't count. You guys are barely above 500. We didn't spend a billion dollars on our team. <laughs> we have team friendly contracts. Could have used us. Uh, I found uh, my least favorite person in the world. And I want to talk about that coming up next. And are you prepared for this? All that's still to come. But first, your swag with Sports Center. Now, now, from the Fan Sports Desk, a Sports Center update on 1080 The Fan. Brought to you by Crunch Fitness. Memberships as low as $9.99 per month. Find your crunch time in Portland, Vancouver, and online at crunch.com. First on the fans, Scotty Scheffler winning his second green jacket in three years at Augusta. A final round, four under 68. Good for a four-shot victory over Ludwig Aubert at 11 under par. 
birdied six of his final 11 holes. He's won three of his nine starts this season, top 10 in all but one start. The NBA season mercifully ending for the Blazers in a 121-82 loss to the Kings that put him dead last in the Western Conference. They have over a 13% chance to land the number one overall draft pick. The play-in tournament starts Tuesday in the NBA. First up, Western Conference Lakers-Pelicans in the 7-8 game from New Orleans. The winner is the seventh seed against the Nuggets in the first round. Loser takes on the winner of the Warriors-Kings game. In the East on Wednesday, Sixers and Heat are the 7-8 matchup. The winner faces the Knicks in round one of the playoffs. The loser gets the winner of the Hawks-Bulls game. More sports scores and stories in 30 minutes. Jason Swigart from the Fan Sports Desk. Listen live or on demand at the Odyssey app, the Fan's desktop player, or tell your smart speaker to play 1080 The Fan. One number does it all for contests and texting your favorite fan. This is Dirt and Spray on 1080, The Fan. Well, I found 
One of my least favorite people on the planet. I've never met her before. Ah. Very angry, though. Can't wait to hear the mansplaining coming our way. And there's just a moral way to do things in life. There's a right and a wrong, and this is being handled the wrong way. And I need to get it off my chest. The Masters happened this weekend. Uh, Scotty Scheffler won. Big deal for golf. His second major championship puts him alongside Dustin Johnson has two. John Rahm has two. Justin Thomas has two. So he's now in that category. And many people think he's going to win another one this year, and he's off and running. It was a great tournament until the last couple of holes. Thomas has two? Of, Which two he did won he two win? PGAs. He's got oh, two PGAs. PGAs. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. He's, he's similar to Scotty, just only won one major, but two of the same major. He seems broken. Uh, he did not play well this weekend. Fired his caddy. A lot of folks really struggled this weekend, yeah. which I think put into perspective why what Tiger did on fr- Go look at the scores on Friday. Tiger Woods shooting an even round 72 at his age, not being yeah. able to walk. And play 23 holes <laughs> total that day. Jordan Spieth shot like an 87 this weekend. Mm-hmm. He's out there like a 13 handicap. No, but one of the takeaways from the Masters is they do a media lottery during the tournament every year, and they allow certain me- uh, members of the media who win the lottery t- to go play around the golf at Augusta on Monday, the day after the tournament. Today, a group of media members, they get to go play around the golf at Augusta. And one of the people that won that lottery we talked about earlier was Julia Westerman, who I looked it up. I was curious where she's from. She is a sports anchor from WIS TV in Columbia, South Carolina. Hell yeah, brother. It's not even in Atlanta. It's not even a suburb of Augusta. She's from Columbia, South Carolina. Champion Gamecocks. Coming on down. And she has never played a round of golf in her life. And her first round of golf in her life will be at Augusta National. I'll argue, should be the last round of golf in her life. I would argue shouldn't be a round of golf at all. Well, If that's... she had a moral high ground here, she should get this invitation and say, you know what? Get out of here. This is disrespectful to all the people who love golf, who what? play golf, who enjoy the sport, and no. actually want to play the course. Hmm. What is she going to shoot? How long is that going to take? She's not going to be able to make contact with the ball. Yeah, I know. What are we doing here? I mean, she won. Why is somebody that has never played, she should hand this right, this privilege that she has been awarded to somebody who is deserving of the opportunity. I think this should go, though. I I think, yeah, this scorecard, like, if she's going to play, she's, though, there's no picking it up. You got to play. That would take 13 hours. Well, then that to goes play in those to conditions. illustrate. She can't land story, a ball in the green. And then the story <laughs> needs to be just how difficult you this see? game is. How hard the course is playing this weekend. Yeah. Scotty shooting a 60 whatever yesterday was like a miracle. What's Nobody her score? else is under par. Like, it's got to be two over 200. It's, uh, no, it's not. It's uncountable. It's over She's never played golf She's before. She's going to have a lot of pickups, isn't she? Like, hey, She's not going to be able to get the ball off the tee. Yeah, if you've never played. The things in master's condition. Take your wife. Those, has your wife ever played yeah. golf? Yeah. Okay. If she went out to Augusta right now. How she many, would beat this lady. How many times does she get off the tee box? <sighs> you know, I don't know. Not a lot. <laughs> and this is what we're, like, how is this a thing? She won the lottery. She should not have been entered into the lottery. There should be a handicap requirement for it. Do you know how much the person that won the <laughs> $1.3 in Northeast Portland is worth? No, I don't. What if he's? What if he or she is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars? Is that fair? No, it's not. And he should give the money back, too. Damn it. Spread the wealth. You sound bitter. I am very bitter. Um, this pissed me off. This ruined my weekend seeing this story. It ruined your weekend? Like, of, like this is the wow. dream of so many people who play golf. And she sent out, like, a ha-ha tweet of like, I've never played golf before. This should be fun. You quite literally like you're spitting in my face, lady. Are looking up during commercial breaks <laughs> how to apply for a media credential yeah. and I said, how cool would that be? And he goes, it would only be cool if I won the media lottery. <laughs> I mean, I've already been. I do want to get a visor, so that'd be fun. You want access, too. I mean, I want access. You get to go to awesome. you didn't get to go into, you know? It would be awesome, and I would uh, be deserving of this award. Heavy, bitter dirt is I, the best dirt can for I, the show. Can like, I this, get... this is not piss you off as a golf guy who, like, like that's the that's the creed of the cram. It sucks. She's playing. Yeah. She's never played around. It's one thing if she just plays sporadically. Like, I play once a month with my husband. Like, okay, whatever. Like, go have fun. She's never swung a golf club in her life. Why can't she be playing solo in your scenario? Why has it got to be with my husband? <laughs> is that sexist for me? This whole segment might be. I don't know. I mean, it's pissed me off. <laughs> like, imagine somebody You weren't even in the lottery. What are you mad about? What's the dream? Like, you guys are big pickup hoops guys. We don't need to argue about trying and pick up hoops again. Okay. But where's the dream to play pickup hoops? Like, is there a park or an NBA? Like, MSG. MSG. Getting MSG to you and your friends. Yeah. If somebody is like, I've never dribbled a basketball before, but I got invited to a five-on-five run at MSG, would you be a little pissed? But not if I'm not in the running. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're not even in it. Who are you mad for? Maybe what I media am. member are you mad for? I'm collectively mad for the other people. <laughs> you know that they're angry. Oh, you know they're pissed. You know that they're She's angry. She's not even a golf reporter either. Can just I, a sports reporter. So, peek behind the curtain. I don't know. Might be hitting her a bad time. I'm actually going to reach out for her to be on the oh, show God. tomorrow oh, because God. I want to hear how the it. round went. I can't. I'm going to sit out that interview. I'm just going to start screaming. We might have to play your clip <laughs> as we bring her on, too, of like, yes. are you kidding me? I'm, I'm never going to meet this gal in my life. She should have done the right thing. She should have handed it to somebody who deserved the opportunity. You know, I had a decent little round. I, I haven't played golf much. I didn't play that poorly on Sunday. I was pretty proud of how I played, given how lack of golf I played. Yeah, you haven't played golf in like a year. What do you think you tee off? Because I'm assuming you tee off from like the white versions at yeah. Augusta, not the I would tips. hope they would have appropriate tee markers what for do you, people. What's your best guess real quick? I know there's a cliche radio thing to do with golf, but like, are you breaking 180? 150? Oh, I'd say, yeah, if you're if you're not playing tournament tees and you're playing yeah. shorter yardages. But the I'm playing are the same. an appropriate the same. yardage. The greens uh, are fast. I, I'm shooting 125. Okay. At least, if not if not somewhere. I'm, but I think I'm, you could break 180. I'm four putting most holes. Yeah. Have I mean, to be, right? Landing balls on the green was nearly impossible this weekend. Yeah, the pro golfers couldn't do it. I sure as hell can't do there's it. There's 10-yard windows. if there's any wind at all, it's, it's <laughs> over. You're <laughs> it's, yeah. I'm just. Yeah, you're done. Get those, uh, get those azaleas flowing. You got to hope a big rainstorm comes the night before just Something. to soften the course up a little bit to help us out, man. Don't mow the greens. Don't this mow the greens yeah. this morning. Yeah, let them grow. Let them grow. Are you searching for the leftovers of the Masters <laughs> Champions dinner, like lifting leftovers? <laughs> huh? Huh? I'm gonna uh, need a little pimento uh, cheese, please. Yeah, please keep it coming. So I'm now actively looking how to enter to go cover the Masters as a noted uh, radio host who talks lots of golf. Can't wait for us to get declined. <laughs> I mean, we'll definitely. Although get golf declined. is kind of mad at us right now. Have you guys not seen this story? No. Our local golf association's really upset that they're trying to let Red Tail be sold. I did see that. We're holding that over Our for our golf uh, people. Are anti bring baseball to Portland. They do not want baseball. They think it's going to crater the golf market in Portland. Yes. The whole thing, man. Yeah. Everything's going to be more expensive. So, yeah, she's a, she's a villain in my book, Julia Westerman. Why you're on my she a villain? You're she on my S list. dictate the winning. This is all your fault. And uh, do the right unbelievable. thing. You still have time. I don't know what time they teed off today, but you have time to do the right thing, Julia, and I hope you do the right thing. You are dressed and look exactly <laughs> like a guy that would complain about this on radio. I was ready, just in case you called me this morning. I'm on a flight. I'm on my way. We'll close it up next on The Fam. The Herd with Col-
on 1080 The Fan. It's a great question on Twitter. Who is more upset? AJ asks us. Is it the people who didn't win the lottery to play Augusta? Which clearly you weren't even in it, and look how angry you got. Yeah, somebody said I could hear the jealousy through the radio. Jeez. It's not a good look on you, dirt. I don't care. I don't care. This is stupid, <laughs> and it pissed me off. Nobody does petty on the show like nobody. No, dirt. Nobody. Nobody. I'm lives petty. With more petty than dirt. <laughs> I am as petty as they come. This is du- it, it. This like, yeah. And you guys, if you were honest and open and not f- fearful of sounding misogynistic, would be right there with me. I'm not in it. Why do I care? <laughs> uh, is it the people who didn't win the lottery or the people that have to play with her? It now, might be the people that have to play it's with the her. People yes, that playing with that her. would be way worse. I mean, this yeah. is going to be, and that's why I say, if she's going to go through with it, then I want to see a scorecard. <laughs> yeah, somebody I, tweeted her and tagged us in the tweet. Was yeah. like, we need to see your scorecard. Exactly. <laughs> I could just see a scenario. It's like... Pick, can you just pick the ball up? But we're 200 out. I know, but come on. I just, the hard part that I have with it is it's such a, if you're a golf nut, the, I love this weekend. The Masters is great. I've been to Augusta. It's it's ev- it's everything you imagine and more. It's the perfect sports setting. It's the coolest event that I have ever been to in my entire life. And I've been to a lot of cool sporting events. You, you hold it on such revered ground mm-hmm. as a golf fan. That there's an aspect of somebody who's just kind of like an outsider, like, oh, cool, I get to do this. It's like when you see the post of like the lady who plays her first round of golf and she gets two holes in one, and you just get so angry when you read that because that's not the way that it works for most of us. And it's such a special place that I don't think she'll truly show it the amount of appreciation and respect that she should. Why does every example a woman doing something in sports <laughs> and it upsets you? Why did you go there? You could have just used me. I'm an awful golfer. I'm very angry. I have a real hole in one. You don't. Hey, you're a 15 handicap, you know? You're significantly better at golf than me. <laughs> There's a difference though between being a bad golfer and getting a hole in one and I, like never playing around a golf and hitting a putter and having it run up into the That's hole. the ones that make me mad is the <laughs> is it the sheep ranch one is when they put it in. I'm yeah, like, Yeah, you put it in at Bandon. Um very quickly, didn't yeah. mention it at all. Hell of an ending to a UFC fight, and one of the best buzzer beaters of all time was Max Holloway oh. knocking Justin Gaethy out at, at the, the buzzer. buzzer. We got a he buzzer knockout. To. He didn't need to. He's winning the fight. And last 10 seconds, he goes, bring it. And they just start trading haymakers, and he knocks them cold with one second left. That's badass. Unbelievable. Who ends up winning the most majors, Rory, Brooks, Scotty, or John Rahm? Uh, I know. I'm worried about Roars. I, I think it's Scheffler. I think Scheffler's set to go on a run for a, the next He's got to win years. four just to top Brooks. I understand Brooksy. that. And that's if Brooks doesn't win another one. I understand that. I'll go Brooksy. You go Brooksy? I'll go Brooksy. Scheffler ran away with it. He had 78% of the vote. Uh, what should the Blazers' biggest priority be this offseason? 44% of you say a new coach. Ah. And will they be better or worse record-wise next year? 51% of you say better. Oh. Oh, Lord. God help your souls. That will do it for us, everybody. Petty Dirt signing off. Thanks for being a part of our Monday. We had a great hour. A Masters coverage to open the show. A lot of Blazers, NBA playoffs. Thanks for being a part of the show. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And we will talk to you tomorrow at 6 a.m. Calling us next. Listen to 1080 The Fan. I'm P.J. Glasser with Beck QL. With the Masters completed, it's time to look at the next major, the PGA Championship. This year's PGA will be played in Louisville, Kentucky at Valhalla. I'm looking at Justin Thomas at 28-1. to JT grew up in Louisville and is a two-time PGA champion. He just parted ways with his caddy, and I think that'll help him get his groove back. His odds will likely go down as the tournament gets closer, so grab the 28-1 to while you still can. I'm P.J. Glasser. Bet smart with Beck QL and download the BetMGM app today. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Your home, your savings, your children. Everything that matters to you is at stake in a 